Howdy ho, good neighbors. What's going on? It's Phil Russert, uh, voiceless today. Um, the gods have spoken. My wife is happy. I have lost my voice, but the show must go on. Uh, but gratefully, I have the best co host uh, and friend, and he is an awesome dude from the Written Writ, um, the Bitten Apple, and a bunch of other things going on. Without further ado, my co host, Rafael Tavares Jr. Hey. Hello there, Apple Bites. It's written with Ralph talking to you straight from Phil Show. Phil Show. Phil Show. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Well, not too good from what I can hear. Uh, listen, people have it worse, right? Uh, just a little under the weather today. Um, <clears throat> as you know, the campaign we're going to launch, the proceeds are going for Papa, for my dad. Fortunately, my dad went into the ER today. It's It's been a bad day. Um, so I'm really hoping to, to launch well and strong with this campaign. I am not trying to guilt anybody uh, by any means, just letting you know what the reason of it is. So if anybody can contribute even $5 to this campaign, it's going to a great cause. It's not a money grab um, by any means. And you are going to get some cool stuff for it. Uh, someone's like, why don't you do a crowd? Uh, go fund me. I don't, I don't believe in doing that unless you know you're desperate and you're trying to take care of your family whatever right um you should get something for your money so i did this hey michael how are you <clears throat> um it's always good to like um give something out there you know that's what, like I, i've always wondered with, with, you know i know some people have patreon and they do do stuff like that on the patreon but it always feels weird with the patreon because you always have to figure things out yeah, I mean, I'm not knocking anybody for doing GoFundMe. I just, I don't want to do that. Um, no, but uh, you stated is, it already. You said that's for that specific reason. And, you know, yeah, it makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is to to get a tribute book into my, my dad's mm-hmm. hands. Now, is that important to us emotionally? Yes, but that's not the same as feeding your family. So I don't think it would be right to do a, a GoFundMe. I, you know, I, I can agree with hey, you. Michael. Like, GoFundMe is a certain thing. You know, it gets you certain types of help, medical. Um, you know, you're trying to get something done. You know, right? You're homeless. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> you know, uh, so you, you actually need help. Help. <laughs> right, right. So, long story short, Michael, my father's 77, and he's got stage four cancer, multiple tumors. He's now got heart issues, and a bunch of other things are popping up. And he's declining quickly, and he's not doing well, and he was rushed to the hospital today. I had written a 110-page graphic novel called Papa that's a tribute to him, and he was hoping to get it in his hands before, oh, you know, well, it's possible. But it's going to cost 15 grand to do that, and unfortunately, I don't see myself funding a 15 grand Kickstarter on a book called Papa. Um <clears throat> It's just I don't think it's realistic to think I'll achieve that goal. So I'm trying to make money off this campaign to go towards that, to lower the goal for the Kickstarter for Papa or hopefully make enough. Hey, Christopher Elston. Christopher is going to be live tonight, too, with um, Madcap's uh, uh, creator, um, DM Ray, which is a Philbo publishing book. So please check that out. Maybe jump between the two. Hey, Alejandro, how are you? Charles, how are you? Charles is launching Tuesday, Cold Cutter 3. Charles, drop your link for Charles. the sign-up. Please drop your link for the sign-up, Charles. Christopher, if you're tagging in between this and your show, drop your links. There's DM Ray, who's going to be live uh, in 10 minutes, I believe, with Christopher Elston. Drop everybody, drop your links, please. <clears throat> I do apologize for my voice, but that is what it is. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Before we get into why we're here, ending in 23 minutes is Guido Martinez, published by Philbo Publishing Night. It is funded by the grace of God. We're 153 over. Um, <clears throat> if you guys could um, support him as well, that'd be great. Um, it's a really good campaign. It ends in 23 minutes. It's an action-packed a uh, story of a, a, a hero trying to find himself, literally, the different parts of his soul. Um, it's got gr- a great villains, gal- uh, rogues gallery, beautiful art, action, great exposition. 
a character you can relate to, hence why I'm publishing it. And uh, very professionally done. And you can get issues one through four in catch-up or in the trade paperback. So please um, back this. She even got some nice swag. That's my favorite cover of the villains. You have some nice swag. Yeah, great covers, great swag. Um, we had him on the show recently, and he was talking about all this stuff. I gotta say though, this is such a great book. You know, <clears throat> I figured he would have funded and be over like ages ago. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a shift in Kickstarter to more collectible market than reader market. Um, hence the NSFW covers and and mm. and uh, grading and and you know more collectible stuff. Like I've seen people like Carissa Grant who put out a good book, but they're also incorporating like uh statues and an and stuffed animals and stuff which there's nothing wrong with that by the way i'm not saying it's a negative way to try to help get the collectors in because we need money to make these books um yeah. and we'd love for you to read them and so, of course like, you know nobody's making money <clears throat> off of kickstarter except for the big companies <laughs> yeah yeah and it's flooded i mean there's hundreds of campaigns competing with each other now hey alejandro you're coming in in spanish buddy so uh, he says you need um lemon with honey oh i've been doing everything to get my you had you had to hear my voice an hour ago it was horrible oh you like the beard charm <laughs> I, I i like the voice for your character <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and plug yourself raf <laughs> uh folks do, you know I've, I've been working with charles on his beautiful character cold cutter you guys really do sh should go check out that um Kickstarter as soon as he posts it, and maybe you'll hear a familiar voice uh, as the voice of Cold Cutter. Uh, you should really check it out. <laughs> and, and if course, you want, you can even uh, do voiceovers for your Kickstarter. Then look my way, grease my <laughs> palms, and I'll do some voice stuff. <laughs> exactly, or you could even like a romantic Barry White kind of message to your wife with some boom, bow, bow, maggot, you know, music in the background. There you go. Oh, yeah. It is I. <laughs> yeah, Charles is launching on Tuesday. I'll be hosting. Uh, so uh, please come support Charles W. Morgan, Cole Cutter 3. Uh, support indie creators, uh, especially if you're a reader looking for new stuff. So this is night. Please, guys, we got 20 minutes left. Let's get this up. Maybe we can get to 1,700. That'd be great. That'd Give be us great. a cushion. <clears throat> and uh, that's night. It's funny because when people look at the funding, they, they, they oh, it's done. No, no, folks. Uh, sometimes people pull their money out. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, that's why I'm keeping a close eye because you worry if, if enough people pull out, this could go under. Um, <clears throat> so we're about to launch a campaign in six minutes, and then we're going to have some big name guests on Larry Stroman, Sean Chen, Mike DeBalfo, Geraldo Borges. Um, Mark West. These are all Marvel DC image guys. Um, and we're going to have Kevin Stewart and Kenny Calderon, amazing artists. So this is going to be a fun-filled show um, while we discuss this book. I would say play the trailer, but I have a feeling that um, we get a copyright on the music. <laughs> you know, they sent me on my own song that I wrote. I'm like, what the you what are that. you talking about? This is my music. They do that. Katama actually made music for us so that we didn't have to use um, anything and we wouldn't get any copyright strikes. Right. And we still got copyright strikes. <laughs> I know. Hey, Dennis, yeah, I own chicken wings and beer for all his shares. <laughs> Listen, this campaign, by the way, is going to offer the trade paperback. David Mack, Bill Sienkiewicz, and the Chris Pachalo covers that's a thick book that's the collected that's trade book, of yeah. tragedy so this will be on the campaign as well if you have missed that please check it out um <clears throat> this of course is the creme de la creme Dude, this is this what we're like here the for classic ones the classic art books that we used to collect in the 80s yeah i am um, yeah hard like my head um <laughs> Chance Wolf bracing the cover, beautiful. I mean, this. Uh, thank you to Jason Meadows, my letterer for tragedy, who um, formatted the book. I, I came up with, you know, the ideas and designs with his wow. help, and they came to life. 
Um, and he did just a, a wonderful job. This is over 190 pages. There's the Chris Picciolo on the back. If you can't afford art, I get it. It's expensive. So this is the next best thing, guys. By the way, here is the Chris Picciolo art. It's not for sale. I apologize. <laughs> but um, there you go. Yeah, that thing looks so beautiful. Inked by Jamie uh, Mendoza. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's oh. a classic comic book cover there. <clears throat> and this book is just incredible. And some of the artists that are in it are going to be here today. I mean, when you open it up right away, you got the David Mack cover and uh, Ray Acevedo. I'm not Ray Acevedo, uh, Gus Mock uh, cover here. Then you've got Ray Acevedo on the credits page. And then you've got the, the table of contents. One adjustment's being made on this book, though. You got a little blurb by um, Ricardo with his art. Um, and then, of course, every single interior page to the first five chapters of this book, which is 150 pages. I mean, there's action, there's exposition. It's just if you appreciate the art, I am not selling interior pages. This is your chance to get them in 11 by 17 size, though. Um, and if that is not your thing, you, and by the way, double page spread, look at that big double page wow. spread. Yeah. It's just beautiful guys. Beautiful glossed pages, by the way, they're not, you know, how IDW does their artist editions, um, and they're like regular paper. We went with a gloss on this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it feels like a classic, um, eighties art book, you know, the ones we used to get the nice big ones. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You were saying you, know, you, got, it and you go get it at the store. <laughs> the Bill Sienkiewicz cover. You've got the Kevin Stewart. You've got Will Spitasio and Idan Furbis. Um, so you can get a Will. This is a scan. These are covers that are scanned. So they're the actual cover scan. Tyler Kirkham, Ryan Kincaid. I mean, full size. Um Kevin West, who's going to be on tonight, and then Jose Luis from Marvel DC. You're getting big name covers in here, guys. Uh, Al Garza, John Kotsis did one. Uh, everybody's favorite, the Ian Churchill, is in there, scanned. Wow. Jerry Rasco is in there. Ian Churchill, look at that. I mean, it's just it, – I'm never yeah, selling it, that. It, that's my grail. It looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's my grail. Um, I'm not selling Ian, Ian Churchill. That's your only chance to get it. I'm just telling you. Um, Ace Continuado with Adalso Corona Inks, Al Garza. There's, there's some beautiful stuff. Man, I'm just telling you. The Bachalo is in there. Uh, his pencil Bachalo. This uh, we have to fix that. This is a prototype. Uh, the it was too light, so we have to put the Mike DeBoffo cover in uh, at a higher res. Mm. Um, the trifle cover by Ricardo. Um, Jimbo say, Salgado. Pages, and that was the only one, the only page I've seen so far that kind of looks off. Yeah, it's the only one we have to fix, and we're adding two more page, two more covers in here by Kenny Calderon. So, uh, Ardian Sif. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. And then, of course, things to come. And then we we end the book with the Bill Sienkiewicz colored by Alex Sinclair, and a little afterward by me. And that's the book. It Listen, if you like the IDW Artist Editions, this is right up your alley. And we're gonna we're gonna go live. It's eight o'clock in a minute. But um, <clears throat> we're selling original published covers. I don't want to, but I don't have a choice. I'm gonna Here's say you, you, you were selling them before, so. <laughs> this is well. It's for an important important cause with my cause. dad. Yeah. Bill Sinkevich. I had a prelim that Bill gave me as a gift, and it sold for twenty five hundred. If you are a big Bill Sinkevich fan, you know that it's like ten grand for original art from him. Now she may not be a huge character, but this is a published piece of work by Bill Sinkevich and very rare. And this is an original, so we've got that. But we're going to launch live, but we've also got our awesome, awesome guest. He's one of the best people in the industry. He's been awesome to me and my family. Um, I, I really appreciate him. I've loved his work 
since the 80s, not to, to age him or anything. <laughs> and um, his run on X Factor is one of the best runs in comics of all time, in my opinion. And his designs, his redesigns on characters like Havoc, to me, are legendary. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Larry Stroman. Larry! Hey. Yeah, Yo. You shrank, Larry. I'm, I'm, only ha I'm only half here today. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like Larry L. was hanging out with Dirk Manning. <laughs> yeah. We don't see his great beard. Where's the beard, dude? There we go. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, we're going to launch this live right now. And Larry has a cover in here, which I want to show you. Larry, um, thank you. Can you, for can you all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Very okay. well. Thank you for being a part of this, Larry. I appreciate you very much. Yeah. Larry added some class to the uh, – the screen to the project <laughs> oh, oh and we are live i'm going to put that up here live from um, new york it's actually you know what let me wait on that for one second we are live but i want to show larry yeah well the stream yards on a delay sorry dude i gotta say so I, I by the like way larry is weapon, this ahead. is a good book to have too because <laughs> that thing is heavy and nice yeah it's you have no idea how heavy this freaking book is. I can tell by how you were so trying heavy. to show it off. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, it would probably be easier if I went to the table of contents to get to Larry's cover. Larry, um, not to get too deep into it, though, but, you know, what makes you come up with a composition for a cover like you did for Tragedy, for example? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Remember that guy that used to be on um the guy who was on um the show called Heroes? Yeah. He was an artist. So he would go into like a trance and then he would wake up, come out of the trance, and he had all his art and stuff around. It's kind of like that. Well so you, you just go with the flow then. Yeah, that's that's only I can't figure out how to do it any other way. I know um, people they I know people, they just like, they plan out stuff and they yeah. do like a million little sketches and all that kind of stuff. Most of the time, I just go right to the page and just start drawing. And, and it's funny because, you know, a lot of people, um, they go, the artist flow doesn't exist, but the artist flow does exist. The flow right. itself exists. That You know, it exists in writing, it exists in art, it exists in all creative processes. You know, I, I feel like people try to take the flow out of what um, all this has become now. Well, well, one of the points in which it is, which a lot of that changed to me is, you know, back in the early days of doing Alien Legion, you know, I would always be asked to to, to send in, I don't know, four or five uh, uh, sketches for uh, for cover ideas. Right. So I do this, and I don't know, for some reason, it always seems like the one that was least interested in was always the one that was picked. <laughs> so, so I said, I'm going to try something different this time. And what I did was I just actually did a finished drawing and I brought it in. And the editor said, okay. So uh, about a month or two down the line, I was at a convention and they were doing a preview of all the books that were going to be coming out the next month. So there was a finished, there was a finished uh, picture of, the, of that cover. Right. And so I'm standing in the back back of the room, and it was like dark and man, everything, all these people sitting in there. So they were talking about all the upcoming projects for like Epic. And they showed that cover, and I practically got a standing ovation. And I said, see, I'm the one who's been doing it right all this time. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point on, and I've read, a, a flow this, <laughs> I've, I've read this from a number of other artists where they say a, a lot of times that that first idea that pops out of your head is a lot of times the best idea because you're going on emotions as opposed to just like the technical part of stuff. You know, it's like, you know, it's like people learn, you know, they learn like perspective and stuff. And then when they do, uh, they do these panels using what they learn from perspective, it ends up using looking pretty stiff. Yeah. And when, when you actually look at the stuff, you stand there and look at an actual street with cars on it and stuff, 
nothing is set up on a grid. It's just, no. you know, this car is in this direction, that car is in that direction. You look up at, at the building, it's slightly sunk into the ground. The hydrant is half is half sitting there because somebody didn't hit that hydrant a couple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that is the natural look of things, you know? So that's why I always tell people, you know, learn how to just 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 go at it, just just draw the stuff, you know. Yeah, you're, you're, you're talking about a, an alive um, flow and a live drawing and a live yeah. because you know, like you're saying, you know, sometimes when you people draw this stuff, they'll, they'll just draw all the specifics. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I want to show hey, the original. At, I mean, if you. Look, if you stand and look at any city scene, you know, you was able to stand back far enough to look at almost nothing is straight. No. Everything is like at a slight angle. Yeah. You know? Right. And but, to um, me, that's, that's what gives the natural look of things. Well, I love this. Um, I love your style because it's, it's, it's one of those unique styles. You know it's a Larry Stroman when you see it, period. Yeah. Like, there's nobody like you. And I know you take pride in in being Larry, not being a knockoff of anybody, you know, and you have a, a mix of like, to me, it's like a mix of a Western and an Eastern style. And this is just, I'm not selling this. This is one of my favorites. I love this. Every, uh, everything, everything is just an accumulation of bits and pieces of things you've learned yeah. throughout right. your life. And some people, and, and I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot from artists where they get upset because they say, I'm so tired of people telling me my stuff looks like such and such a guy's stuff. I'm like, all you've ever done is study that guy's stuff. That's why, right. that's why it looks like that. Right. So if you if you get to a point where you're, you're picking bits and pieces off of different, and I've gone through the whole range of, from the most, the most simple looking cartoon, comic strip cartoon pictures to you know, paintings that guys have spent years on. Yeah. And everybody has a little something to give, you know. But it, it, in the end, it's just the bits and pieces that you take off of things. And then what I usually tended to do is as soon as somebody says that my stuff looked like somebody else's stuff, I stop looking at their person's stuff. Right. Or right into somebody else. Yep. <clears throat> so artists, artists who spent a lot a long time looking and studying this stuff. They can pick out, you know, they can pick out things. Yeah. But the right. average a comic fan will never say, oh, your stuff looks like this guy or that guy, because that's not even my train of thought. I got to say, you know, <laughs> when I was just doing comics and, you know, I, I would just look at the art. Oh, wait, oh, hold on a second. Did I just see my picture in a book that I do not have? <laughs> this is what we're launching, brother. This is what we're launching. It's, it's in this. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we're launching tonight. You know, I got, you know, I got to get one of those. Yeah, I know. I Dude, know. that looks epic, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, uh, it, Charles it, said it, hi, Larry. Like, that and my like mom said hi, Larry. It looks hey, it looks like one of those artist edition things. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. It's the sequential pages without lettering of the first five issues of Tragedy, nice. and then a bunch of covers. Nice. Yeah, it's heavy as hell. It's it's eleven by seventeen. It's big. I mean, look how thick that is, Larry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna make a joke, but we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's as big as Larry's beard. Now, Larry, um, tell us, uh, huge news, man! You're relaunching something special here, and you're, you're busy at work. Tell us. Uh, well, we're doing the tribe thing again. Um. People keep asking, well, how come you haven't done it all this time? It's because I just didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> That's the only actual answer to it. You know, Todd's always wanted to do it. I just I just was always being distracted by other things that I was doing at the time. And that's that's how the whole creative thing kind of works, is that you're you're constantly just looking for and looking towards the next thing that yeah. you're going to do. And sometimes you just say, "Oh, you know, I get back. I'll get back to that eventually." And the next thing you know, a couple months have gone by, and a couple of years have gone by, and 10, 20, mm -hmm. 30 years have gone by. You're like, "Man, I didn't even know that much time went by." You know. But you know, things happen for a reason when they're happening, and I, I bet you the the long absence will make people really want it even more. You know. Yeah. 
so we're, we're pretty much starting off where we left off. So the That's first, great. the first mm -hmm. issue will actually be issue number five. So you're and starting then from five. Or you starting, starting from st starting out from five. Oh, nice. I like that. But it's like number one, but number five. <laughs> now, are you going to be um, re-releasing the original series yep. that so people? The can original catch up? series, what we have planned for that is to do that as like in a graphic novel form, where Makes we'll sense. have those that first four issues, and then the fifth issue, which 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 I'm uh, working on now, and then you know any type of spinoffs or anything else will probably add, be added to it too. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And um, I owe you a, a cover of Feet. A what? I owe oh, you my cover of Feet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, you know, you're getting it. I know you ain't going to publish it, but you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might have a little leg, too. You never know. Woo. Yeah. But, you know, what I find is an interesting thing when just using it as kind of an example is that uh artists kind of agonize we agonize over what we do because we're trying to make ourselves better we're trying to make something that's unique and that's like almost nearly impossible to do yeah and even when you have jumps and getting better and it could be years in between when that actually happens i mean here it is i'm 62 years old and it still seems like this stuff that I need to learn. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just, it's just a con. It's just this constant, constant process. So when 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 you're trying to do this stuff, and somebody says, "Oh, your stuff, man, your stuff is cool," it kind of reminds me of this guy. Trying to reminds me, of that. man, that's like that's so irritating. <laughs> it's so irritating. So like I said, you know, I just go out of my way to not do that. And then I just put in stuff that just looks cool to me. You know, I'm like, I like to look at some of these, you know, sometimes I look at other people's art and I'm like, man, if I could do that, that would be nice. But even when I start studying other people's stuff, I only do it for so long because you're right back <clears throat> to that square one where somebody's telling you your stuff looks like somebody. But as time so progresses, though, so you're probably you're the, the best compliment. Yeah, the best compliment I ever get is when people say, man, I look at your stuff and I can't tell where you got it from. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I, I got it from the same people everybody else gets stuff from. I just take other things from that. You know, it's like one guy may take some <clears throat> dynamic pictures, that's di dynamic poses that somebody does. Whereas me, I'm trying to learn how to draw windows like that guy does. You know? <laughs> right. I'm yeah, but that's what pros how do, do. How do you do a manhole cover based on this famous artist that you like? Or, you know, or how they draw faucets or garbage or whatever. This is all right. stuff that becomes part of the storytelling <clears throat> that you do, you know? Agreed. But that's why you are a pro because you always seek to get better. Once you think you know it all, you know nothing. Yeah. And then every <clears> once in a while, you get that person that says, man, you can't draw at all. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, it's subjective, and everybody's got an opinion. They're like, you know what? <laughs> but then I say, like rear ends and everybody right, right, but then I say, but <laughs> have you bought the book? And they say, yes. And I said, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all By the way. <laughs> While we've got the, the superstar lineup here, we are being joined by uh, what I consider to be one of the most underrated artists in the industry and a really another really great guy uh, who um, just had a successful campaign on an awesome book, Sean Chen. Sean. Yo. Hey, can you see and hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm like – man, I'm surrounded by crazy talent here. I appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you so much. It's it's really appreciated. <clears throat> I hear your, your um, voice. It's a little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm sick, and oh. my dad was sent to the ER again today. So it's been a rough day, but the show must must go, go on because it's about him. 
Uh, there's Sean Chen's cover in all its glory. Um, hey, how'd you get that? <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, Sean drew Breath of the Dragon in a in a pose on that cover that um, it was just perfect. Like he didn't read the book yet, but you know I gave him the references, and it's just he's relentless. He's on top of her. He's just formidable. It was just really powerful and posing. I I, I love the cover. Um, and it's just great. Like you look at Larry's style and then you look at Sean's style and to get these awesome different styles and, and depictions of my character, uh, is extremely flattering, um, and humbling. I mean, you guys are guys that I've admired and followed your careers and bought your books and, and love your stuff. And here you are doing my character. And I'm like, Holy crap. <clears throat> my mother said, hello, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, she's a great lady. Yeah, she's a really. It's great that she's um, very supportive of you and, and, and the whole family. And it's like you, you have a whole. Well, family if I go under, we're all homeless. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Gerald had said, by the way, um, hey Phil and company, and then just in regards to Larry, he said he loves his Alien Legion issues. Larry, they are treasures. Thanks. <clears throat> That's still one of my favorite books that I've ever drawn. And and the reason why is because I think I, I developed more as an artist doing that book than anything else I've ever done. And Do you think it was because of all the sci-fi elements? It was a well, challenge? Here's, here's what the problem is that people, that a lot of guys have when they come into the industry, is that everybody comes into the industry wanting to draw the X-Men and, 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 and whatever is popular at the time. I think that's the worst decision that an artist can make. Because you still haven't really learned a whole lot of stuff. You're just coming in and you're being bombarded by fans and what they have to say about you and yeah. the company. You know, I know so many guys that come in mm -hmm. and they get put on a good book and two issues later, they're not even working at the company anymore. Because they mm -hmm. haven't been able to spend any time to get to that point where they're good at telling a story and and that they build up a fan base that fan base is very important <clears throat> do you think because it and, wasn't and such a mainstream huh do you think because it wasn't such a mainstream book that you got to spread your wings a little bit eventually i thought it was the one of the greatest things i ever got to do because i'm just like almost nobody pays attention to this book i mean it has its hard <laughs> I mean, it has just hardcore fans, but when you think of like mainstream comics, almost nobody pays attention. I said, okay, I can make mistakes, and I made a lot of mistakes. I almost got kicked off that book three, four different times. <laughs> because I did, I've been, I did such an awful job on certain things, but but the editor, Carl Parks, he just he just let me he let me go through that process of, of just learning and trying to get better and trying to get better. So finally, when I hit the point where I was doing mainstream stuff, people were like, where did this guy come from? I never seen him before. And I'm like, I've been working at this company for seven years. <laughs> and what about but you, Sean? Well, people don't get, people don't get to come into the industry like that anymore. They come <clears> in <throat> and they put you right on something important, and it seems yeah. like it's great, but it's really a mistake, you know. And what are your thoughts on that, Sean? I mean, especially with you, you started off, you know, on a, a decent book, but not huge, and then you just went into the boom, you know doing big name books. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I guess the small time for me was at, at Valiant, which actually was a, a little uh, indie darling at that time. So um, it was great to be there, but I always had my eye on, on Marvel. So the big show was Marvel. And, and then uh, Iron Man was just coming back from uh, Image um, for the Heroes Return event. So that's why I showed back up there. And then that was like the big stage. And um, yeah, I, I just knew that it was it was either make or break. I mean, it's either you kind of just do a bad job and disappear or you can make a name for yourself. So I just kind of just devoted myself to doing the best job I can. And then I thought there'd be a point where you actually, you make it and you can relax, but really it's, it's you know, after that, you got to prove yourself on your next assignment. So I was on Wolverine and then X-Men and the Avengers after that. So uh, every project kind of have to level up even more and, and kind of improve in, in a very unnatural way, an unnatural pace. So, but see, but, I, but see, that's what I'm talking about. That's why it was good for me to be on Alien Legions as long as I would, because I got to I, I got to go through that 
without it really affecting them much of anything. And then every once in a while, I'm like, oh, let me try this. And let me try this. And let me add this into the book. And let me try this style. And sometimes stuff didn't work. And sometimes it worked. And when you, when the stuff <clears> worked, <throat> you, you know, it's like I always tell people that I, uh, I was never, uh, I never felt comfortable with drawing hair. I just couldn't figure it out for some reason. So then um, I just started drawing hair as a design and it became much easier to do. And as soon as people started saying, oh man, a little way you draw hair. I'm like, I'm like, cool, by accident, I came up with something. <laughs> so now I draw the hair like that pretty much all the time because, because uh, it, it, it makes it so that I don't have to draw any actual hair. <laughs> Very cool. Now, did you guys ever feel frustrated that you couldn't give your best work because of deadlines being so tight? You've got to hurry up and get how many pages in in such a short time that you don't have the time to be as detailed as maybe as you would like? <clears throat> well, for me, yeah. Um, I naturally am not a, a fast artist. So um, the deadline was making it so that I would turn everything at about like 70% finished. And uh, mm. I thought that everyone kind of would agree the same thing. Like this all looks like, like it uh, was taken away too early or, um, or it's not finished, but then, you know, nobody notices. So it's just, it's kind of all in your head. Um, so yeah, uh, these days I have the luxury mm. of taking a lot of time. Um, and, and I do take all that time. So. <laughs> Every once in a while you hear somebody say, Oh, you know, such a such a book is a masterpiece. It took, took this artist ten years to draw this book. Well, it didn't. It didn't actually take ten years to draw the book. You were just drawing the book in between doing other stuff. Right. And then there've been times when you're just like, "Hey, I don't want to be bothered with this," and you put it away for a year. <laughs> and then you come back a year later. I said, "Oh man, I forgot I had this. Let me get back to this again." <clears throat> oh, but wait a minute, my style is a little bit different than it was the <clears throat> last. So then you start changing little bits and pieces of things here and there. The next thing you know, people say, oh, man, this is a great it, this is a great book. It was 10 years in the making. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you can done that book in a couple months, you know? But that having a well, that well, having I know. a long, well, the thing <clears throat> is having a long, having to learn how to draw fast is really kind of a unique kind of a thing because you you're not just learning how to draw fast you're learning how to draw fast you're trying to make something look good and you're trying constantly trying I'm to figure sorry. out what do i put in this and what do i leave out of this yeah. it's right. the leaving out is equally as important as what you put in there and some people can't figure that out and that's why it drives them crazy uh, and they end up getting fired off of books because they can't meet those deadlines because they haven't been able to figure that out so what do you guys think about this, you know, the practice in the last several years of studios, like overseas, they'll have someone rendering backgrounds, someone, you know, they have a whole team doing the pages as opposed to the one art. You guys, you were one art. Well, you did everything. Well, in, a, got well, in America, team, that was just a foreground team. No, in America, out. that was referred to as a bullpen. <clears throat> Marvel, you, Marvel and DC had bullpens, and these guys are there to correct things and and all that kind of stuff. So 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 it leaves, you know, the artist more of a, you know, more of a chance of being able to save a book if they make mistakes. So, you know, you might not have drawn the belt buckle on, on some character the correct way in this panel or that panel. You might have left out somebody, or maybe the the characters are facing in the wrong direction. And it, so when you look at it as a storytelling thing, it doesn't make much sense. And that's what those guys were there for, to help out. You know, and now they're just drawing it, though. They're all drawing it. It's not even like fixing or touching up. It's they're a team that draws the panels together. It's you know what I mean? But only yeah. one artist gets the credit. Well, mm. that's that's always been the case. I mean, I started off I started off being what was referred to as a ghost artist. And that's a guy who drew stuff. And then, the, and then the main artist was the one who finished it and then got credit for, for finishing it. So, but it was, a, that's how you got into comics at the time. Right. And you hear a lot of those stories when, when it comes to Marvel and DC, where, you know, you, you had people like, I worked on that. No, no, this yep. someone worked on that. No, 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 that was me. I tell you, one, one of the best examples of, of how that worked perfect 
one of the most, to me, like one of the most perfect comics that's ever been done. And that, that was a treasury edition book of Spider-Man versus Superman. There must have been like 50 dudes that worked on that comic. And it was a perfect looking comic book, you know? So, so Sean, you just had a successful campaign on a book that I got to read and I absolutely love you. Um, you're writing it, you're drawing it, and I know you're doing a bunch of other things too. <clears throat> Tell us about it because people need to hear about it. It's awesome. Uh, well, the book is called Evermind, and it's a story that uh, I created. Um, it's uh, kind of in the near future, and uh, it's just kind of one of those high concept things where it's kind of built around a, a very interesting kind of concept. And right now, um, the Kickstarter was for the first three issues. So I'm working on the, the second half of it now for the second part of the Kickstarter. So uh, I think um, it'll be released soon because I think it's at the printers now. Uh, it's um, very interesting because it kind of deals with a lot of topical stuff. I'm kind of moving away from the superhero stuff and more into science fiction. Um, can you give with, us a uh, little, can uh, you give us a little like, synopsis? Well, I mean, <laughs> it gets kind of complicated, but um, basically it's a, uh, it's really a story about a scientist who's kind of like flying a little bit too high. He's got a big, big ego and he's really hell bent on succeeding. Um, and he's kind of like makes a little bit of a deal with the devil type thing where he partners with some very sketchy people. And then once he realizes the errors of his ways, he's kind of has to go like all in on trying to undo a lot of this before there's serious damage, uh, which includes using that technology on, on himself. So um, it's, I can't really give a synopsis, but it's more like a teaser because it's it gets really involved. But um, it, it has it great implications of <clears throat> of mortality, immortality. Um, you know right. what what you would um, what uh, ethics you would compromise for ego and the greater good. There's a lot of great exposition there, but it's all wrapped in this beautiful package of action, adventure, and sci-fi. And uh, I really enjoy it. And you know that. So between Tribe coming back and this book coming out, man, the indie scene, mainstream, amazing artists like you guys are putting out some great content, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, the um, thing is, I yeah. love science fiction. Yeah. I've always loved science fiction since I was a little kid. I think I'll love science fiction until I'm gone. And I wish that I could if, if I had a choice to just draw something forever, it would be science fiction. Unfortunately, you don't make a great living <laughs> doing just science fiction stuff. So that's why we hop around to trying to, you know, doing the mainstream thing or whatever. But even within the mainstream thing, I still try to stick some of that science fiction stuff in there. But like I said, the Alien Legion was one of the few books that if somebody said, do you want to do this again? I would say, okay. Nice. Again, it's a it's because it's a science fiction thing. Most of the comics that I like and that I like to read, even to this day, is science fiction related. I know you're a big Kirby fan. By the way, um, our our next guest, he can't stay long. He's got his family, but he was very kind to come on and and hang out. He's one of the nicest guys in the industry. Draws women unbelievably. Um, so I just want to introduce Mike DeBafo. <clears throat> What's up? Hey, Mike. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Yeah, your audio is wacky. You might need headphones. Is it? it like I'm back in. My headphones are giving me trouble, too. All right, you sound like Iron Man or something. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Sean should be drawing you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Larry should be collecting your book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because I'm here to take over the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I apologize. I'm I'm not like trying to shove it. We should have we should have, we should have had him room. saying, "Bring me to your leader." Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a perfect voice. <laughs> Good night. I love you. Sleep well, sweet dreams. God bless. Want to say hi to Larry and Ralph, Sean. Hey. Remember, kitten. Yeah. So when she's headed to bed, I love you. Sleep well, sweet dreams. God bless. You are you are always do that Walton's thing. <laughs> like that. Listen, uh, more now more than ever we we need it. I love you. Oh, um, the whole the whole 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I always wanted to do a book like this um, and to be able to show off all the beautiful covers I got from all of you professionals. But again, just to remind everybody, it's not a guilt trip. It's not a marketing ploy. My dad has stage four cancer. He has multiple tumors. He's now got heart issues. He's got other things going on. He's in the emergency room right now. He's not doing well. And I had written a graphic novel called Papa, which is a 110-page graphic novel. It's a tribute to him. It's written in a Silver Age style, and everybody loves it and read it. Yes. And he would really right. love to see it in his hands while it's possible. But $15,000, I don't think I'm going to make that on a Kickstarter without boobs on it. And I don't think Papa with boobs, that's a whole different genre. So, so I think what one of the things, one of the good things that you are able to do, especially as a writer, is is to write a story where um, you know you don't see what's coming coming, and, and I like that you are able to do that because you you know you you craft your story and you never see what's coming coming. You may think that you know what's going to come out, but you, you never you you know you're like okay, where did this come from? Which is a good thing. Well, I try to do that. I want to keep you on your toes as a reader, and I want you to be interested, you know. And and I don't – when I work with great artists, I don't want to fail them by giving a crappy written product, you know. I mean, if I'm going to – if Mike and Sean and Larry are going to put their name on a cover, I need, to, I need to do them right, you know, for what their reputation is attaching it to a book. So it better be written right. It better be written well, or it's embarrassed. You know, I don't. You don't have to like me, but hopefully, you respect what I'm doing in the industry. Bear, say goodnight to everybody. See Larry. You know, Larry and Sean. That's Mike. Sleep well, sweet dreams. God bless. The Waltons. The Waltons. <laughs> um. So I know Mike doesn't have a lot of time. Um, uh, Phil, it's it's yeah. nice that you're not on here with like, you know, makeup and. Lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Larry's referring to two incidences uh, during COVID. My daughter, Melanie, you know, she was stuck home. We were, you know, you were everybody was in the house, and she was bored and down. So they gave me a makeover, <laughs> makeup, nails, everything. Even gave me a toga dress from a sheet and stuff. And it mortified Larry that I had lipstick. He said, "Don't ever show me that again." And, and just recently, my daughter's 10th birthday, her friends all attacked me and did a makeup job on me and everything. So I posted because it's fun. And Larry, it's just a running joke at Larry and I. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's good parenting. Yeah, now, exactly. Now, speaking of good parenting, Mike, has he has he he's with his kids today, and he's been very kind to take some time out to hang out. He doesn't have a lot of time. Not that I'm chasing you off. I just don't want to keep no. you from. I, yeah, no, I got like uh, 15 minutes or so. I, I got to feed the kids. But, yeah, I didn't want to leave you hanging, man. Like, you're a friend. I'm not going to do that to you. Well, it's very kind of you. Mike is one of the nicest guys. But I do think you also draw women like nobody's business. And okay. it's the, your cover is absolutely one of the biggest sellers uh, of my covers, by the way. And. The problem is I have to fix it in the book, the the the, the uh, promo book I got because the pencils are so light that it didn't come out well. I have to high res it more. But okay. I mean, just, just look at the, I mean, just the detail on this. And this is the funny thing. I was just at New York Comic Con. Was it last year? You are awesome. Thank you. And I do jam pieces, as you can see behind me. And I went to Mike. I was like, Mike. Everybody knows you could draw women. Show them you can draw anything. And he drew Gladiator from the Imperial Guard, and it just looks freaking awesome. Thanks, because Phil. sometimes you get typecast into something, you know, yeah. like an actor would. Like Sean, probably everybody thinks, oh, Sean's great because he could draw tech, 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 tech. They always ask you to do Iron Man. They always ask you to do backgrounds. And Mike, it's always women, women, women. And Larry, I don't. I think they just ask you to draw anything. <laughs> but, um, but Mike – is a, a extremely skilled, detailed artist. He's one of the best. Um, I think it's amazing. I wanted to get, I wanted to get a second cover from you, uh, but you were busy, so hopefully, I'd well, like to get around to that. We've been talking about it. I, I, I was thinking about this the other day when you approached me about doing this. I thought we talked. I saw you in Vegas uh, yeah. in June. I thought we talked about a cover then. You said you were busy. 
<laughs> you didn't have you, you because you you had some deal going on. You know, you were doing coffin comics and some other stuff as usual. And yeah, uh, coffin. Yeah, coffin. Uh, yeah, they they booked me out for several covers in advance. But let's touch yeah, it was just a busy time. Again. Yeah, but it's not like it's not like we can't come around to it. That's that's one thing I'm bad about too. It's like I do get caught up in my own little world over here. So if you want something, man, like anybody listening to this, like if you want a project, like don't hesitate to reach out to your your artist that you admire and ask them. Yeah. You know, you're not no, you're not no. bothering in any of us. Like we need the work. <laughs> See, and that's the thing is, people. Uh, I I don't. I hope this comes out right. I admire and respect all of you greatly for your achievements in the industry that saved my childhood and that I love. But I'm not one to be kneeling at the altar to anybody. You no, know, of course. And I think, but I think also when you guys interact, that's with why me, you're think, not one of my best friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I and I could be wrong, but I think also the fact is I don't try to take advantage of you guys. It's got to be hard to be in your position because yeah. a lot of people try to be your friend to either yeah. say, look at me, I'm friends with so and so to use your name or to yeah. get favors from you. And I don't try to do that. And and I can't imagine because you do have a certain level of fame, all of you. And you can't you don't know who's coming to you genuinely and who's trying to use you for your name. Yep. And that yeah. could be a hard thing. You have to keep boundaries. Yeah, and so even now, like I'm, I'm 15 years <clears> in, um, and I still, it still happens sometimes. I'm much more vigilant of what you're talking about now, because like, yeah, you get a lot of beggars and hangers on, um, and I'm better about catching them now. But eventually, sometimes they do still slip through, and it still bothers me as much as it did <laughs> any number of years ago. You know, somebody pretends to be your friend for a time, and and I don't mean to like talk. No, it's fine. Go much, ahead. This is like, tough yeah, to it, 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 it is bothers. It, it is bothers. It's part of the process. What's that? It's part of the process, you know. So go ahead. I, I, I just, it, it is. It, anyway, with, with someone like Phil, like, like no, dude, like you're not. I, I never got that vibe from you. Like I'm, I'm good at picking up on it these days. Like it's pretty obvious most of the time. Once you get enough experience with that sort of thing, but with you specifically, I, Phil, like I haven't run into that. Man. Like you've always been a cool dude. Pain in the ass. I, I just <laughs> assume. I just assume everybody's trying to take advantage of me. So. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't consider yeah. anybody my friend. Well, Larry, wear something nice, and we might be able to talk. <laughs> I don't. I don't like dressing nice. I like wearing, you know, <laughs> bum, bummy type clothes. Oh, by the way, uh, Chance Wolf uh, was going to be on, but he's been slammed with work. As you oh, know, Chance yeah. did the cover, the the art that's on the cover, which is another big seller. Yeah, that's um, a cool piece. Chance, as you know, you know, he inked image stuff, especially Spawn. He, he's a great guy. Another one. Um, you know, they often say don't meet your heroes uh, for heroes supplementing, you know, people that you respect and admire in the industry. And not that I can't give my share of horror stories, but honestly, Chance, you guys, Billy Tucci, there's a, there's a lot of you that are really honestly just good, good, decent people that that are just trying to get through the day like everybody else and you happen to have a great job which i know is hard it's still work but it, it is you know a level of celebrity that comes with it so i but i there's so many wonderful stories i can tell and i love working with all of you um and i'm proud to be able to say that i i have covers from you guys and I look forward to working with you more in the future i mean jesus i want to i want to get guys on sequentials like sean's too busy Larry is now got tribe, but um, someday I'd, I want to grow to where I can really work with you guys more consistently. Um, yeah. You know, I, I love it. And <clears throat> Mike, um, you know, tell us about what you've got going on and, and what you're plugging and, and, and things like that. Uh, well, right now I'm trying to hook a cover up with uh, my, my buddy, my buddy, Phil. Uh, he, won't, he won't answer my emails though, so he yeah. he, might, he might be out. Um, but no, I just uh, I just po posted a new cover I did for uh, my friend Zach at Goblin Comics and Collectibles. So that's up on my social media right now. It's coming out tomorrow. Um, other than that, I'm not. It, it's always an awkward thing for me to talk about because I'm not sure what I can what I can release right now, public right. you know publicly or not. Like I got a bunch of Lady Death stuff coming up. Um, Goblin cool. Comics uh, renewed my agreement for the year uh just recently nice. so i got that coming up um don't have any conventions coming up so far um which is weird for me <laughs> you know for the first time in a while say, like, usually you're, you're at a bunch of conventions <laughs> yeah yeah usually I'll, I'll, I'll do as many as i can not a ton but i'll, I'll, I'll do uh you know uh, i try to i try to hit 
the East and the West Coast. I don't have anything lined up right now. Um, so I don't have much to plug, as it turns out. It sounds like. Um, but, yeah, I just, I, like I said, uh, on my social media, I just dropped a cover with the uh, Goblin Comics. So that's coming out tomorrow. And then next week, actually, uh, I, for my own self, I put together some uh, some blind bags of comps I have laying around. I did a bunch of remarks. And I threw those randomly into the blind bags. So I'm going to put those up in my online store next week. So if nice. you guys uh, want to follow me on social media, you'll see me post about that and a link to that next week if you guys want to grab something like that. Not every and not every blind bag has a remark. Uh, it's it's almost a 50% chance of pulling a, re, a remark in the blind bags, though. Cool. So I did a bunch That's of those. Cool. <clears throat> People love, love the mystery. I guess it's like that yeah, feeling right? of Christmas where you're opening a gift and you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, they right, love that, that right. stuff. My kids eat it up. Go to any store in the world, and at the counter, they'll have the impulse buy counter with the oh, yeah. blind bag, yeah. whatever, anything at all. They don't even know what the property is. They want it because it's, you know. As long as it's a blind bag, not a dime bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the reason. My daughter's the same way. So this is like there's something special to it. She goes, I want to get that special edition. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, right. They're all about it. So. But yeah, people love yeah. the blind bag stuff, man. The rain, like the, the uh, I think, I think you're right. I think it's the thrill, the chase somewhere in there. Yeah. They, they really enjoy. Well, yeah, I mean, we all like the, the treasure hunt, the Christmas yeah. gift, op not opening the package, not knowing what you're getting. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, dude, you guys, I mean, I don't have to say it like you don't know, but, I mean, you look at all your Lady Death covers. I mean, you, you must make Brian a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know how. I honestly don't know. Uh, I don't know the numbers. Uh, but he did, he did tell me a while. We were talking about, Brian and I were talking about something, and I said something like, oh, well, I, I never assume that I have a job with anybody. I'm freelance. You know, I never assume I'm going to get hired back. And Brian right. looked at me, and he goes, "With coffin, you can assume." <laughs> he just said that. Well, That's see, you I know, know, you and Sean are very humble uh, for guys who have established what you've established in the industry. And Larry just doesn't give a shit. So, it's a great. <laughs> it's that's, a great... that's the most truthful thing you've ever said about me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um. You know, it's it's. I think it's one of the reasons why I I enjoy working with you guys. I mean, geez, there was a point <clears throat> two months ago where I was at Sean's house bothering him. I think three times in in a month. His wife was probably like, "All right, tell him you're busy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy again. Yeah. We gotta move. Um. <clears throat> oh, and Sean, I didn't forget you about the the Batman. Um, I just didn't get to see you at the Big Apple show the the batman uh the turn thing um <clears throat> i i just sincerely the, the, for your contributions to this book i can't thank you enough um and i i'm telling you guys now i don't want to do this i hate it i want to keep this you cover but i have do, to man. sell it it's for my dad yeah you gotta do <clears throat> to get papa in his hands and to be honest with you, I, I got to say that Phil happen. went through a great lengths to get all this art and all these covers so he could buy them so that nobody else had them. So if he's selling them, it's for a good reason. Yeah. 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 yeah I never wanted to sell any original art. I mean, I own everything. It's like uh, everything, um, not just for creator control, but because I'm fans of these people. I love you guys. I love what you do. You know, I mean, I get I get the different styles that you bring and your interpretation of my character. I mean, you gotta understand I'm a 51 year old guy who grew up on comics in an era where we didn't have social media and digital printing and coloring. Yeah. The thought of doing a comic was as if it was, it was the same as thinking I was gonna make a movie, you know? Philip. <clears throat> Philip. Yeah. I'm gonna give you this so you can uh Oh, that's cool. I'll give you this so yeah. you can sell it for your call. Dude, you don't have to do that. I'm not asking nice. you to do that. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. See? So, <laughs> Dang. Just, just remind me to send it to you. Thank you. You got Phil. You got no, I mean, I'm talking. <laughs> uh, look, I didn't, I didn't know if I was allowed to say this out loud, but when COVID hit, I wasn't allowed to work for 18 months and I have a $3,000 mortgage and I have a family and Larry offered to, to give me a ton of art to sell, to feed my family. Um, and Larry is one of the kindest guys I've ever met. And he's been a good friend to me. And, you know, I just, you say the stuff bad about him. I fight you. 
That's it. And Sean has been kind and Mike. <clears throat> um, I'm very fortunate uh, that you, you're just really awesome people. And I do appreciate that because um, I don't even know if Papa's going to get his hands in time, but I'm sure as hell going to try. Um, That's all you can do. And yeah, just it. things like that, Larry. Thank you. Yeah, it's worth a try. Do what yeah. you got to do. It's family. Um, Only way and, to know if we can is <clears throat> do it. <laughs> and I, I just want people to understand, you you know, you don't always know what these guys are going through. They're bombarded with messages or they're, they're meeting deadlines and people are coming at them from all angles, whether it's editorial staff or fans or whatever. And they're humans. Sometimes they're exhausted. Sometimes they're in a bad mood or sometimes there's something going on in their own family life you don't know about. Give them a little leeway. Give them a little break. If it's been six months since you got your commission, politely just reach out and say, hey, just giving you a reminder. It's just art at the end of the day. None of them are looking to screw you over, but we all go through shit too. So I want you guys to see that side of them too because they're good people. And maybe you got them at a bad time, but yeah, they're one good of the, people. On the tales of what you're <clears> saying right now, uh, not too long ago, um, a fan of mine became a friend of mine, a good, a good close friend of mine. And um, somewhere, you know, after a year or two, uh, we became better friends. Anyway, came to me one day and was like, you know, it's been, it's been interesting getting to know you, Mike, because I how I found you through your art, so on and so forth. And, you know, now I know you as a person and I see you going through hardships and things like that. And at first when I saw or I heard you coming to me with like personal issues, like it was hard for me to hear that stuff. And he said, um, oh, gosh, it's going to keep me now. But basically the idea, like you're a real person, Mike, and you have like normal problems like anyone else. And that was the weirdest thing for me to hear from <laughs> someone like I never see myself as that idol on, a, on an ivory pedestal or anything like that. Anybody like, you know, I'm just a person like I, I put my shoes on one shoe at a time just like everyone else you know and i have my personal <clears throat> problems like you're saying like i have bad days and to somebody I mean, who you... saw me as like someone they look up to as an artist and then seeing me just being like a normal guy like superhero without his cape on was <clears throat> interesting to hear from someone to actually and i'm sure it's that. nice because you know people think you're supposed to respond the second they reach out to you or they sometimes, sometimes they overcross yeah. boundaries that you're not in that you're not that close to me to be talking like this you know or, uh, yeah that happened to me today <clears throat> yeah i had to i had to swat someone down like you know, <laughs> this is not the place for that sorry it's yeah. tough and, and you know and i'm a nobody and i get 100 150 messages a day from strangers and some people cross boundaries etc so i can't imagine what you guys get it's, i it's mean you know used to be, but. you know and sean Sean is uh, busy working his rear end off and uh, trying to make every page look absolutely perfect and stressing himself out. And then he's probably getting messages from people and he's like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> I got to get work. And and I just want to reiterate, I do know that you guys are taking time out of your schedules. Larry's on Tribe and the deadlines. And he's working hard on Tribe and you're working on your covers. You got your kids and Sean is working on you know, your, your book and other projects and you're a family man. Uh, and it, it gets overwhelming and that you would even spend any time with me, uh, to try to help promote this book means a lot. It really does. And, yeah, cool, and the way you guys are supported. I, I mean, if I can ever return the favor, please know that I, I absolutely will. Um, hands down, you know, as long as it's something in my power and it isn't something illegal, I'm happy to help. Well, I gotta go. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Phil, as long as you continue to tell people about the the black friend that you have, <laughs> that'd be a good thing. Well, you know, it's like the Cosby Show. I gotta have one guy around of the other color, guy. right? You gotta be the Keep token. Your back. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I gotta tell him I'm not racist. I have a black friend. <laughs> <clears throat> no, nah, you know. Uh, Sean has not broken bread at my home, but I've been lucky to be at his home. Larry has broken bread at my home. Mike hasn't. Sean and Mike, you're always welcome to break bread at my home. Uh, Mike, you know what I told you. If you're at New York Con or you're in New York and you need a place to crash, you come stay. Even if you got a guest, we'll figure two of you out. We'll, we'll make you fit. Um, but uh, And I don't offer that lightly. You know, Not anybody is allowed around my <laughs> kids. <laughs> yeah, no, I, but, I appreciate that. Gotta be safe, yeah. <laughs> I would be the same way. Yeah, like I don't, I don't. A lot of the 
I don't I don't bring my kids around to conventions and things like that just because like I don't want them to expose not that I don't trust people, but like that's work. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't know, I don't want my kids to be part of my work that way. It's weird. Well, um, plus you being in spotlighted, you gotta be careful. You never yeah. know who the hell's coming around. Well, there is that too. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like like sometimes people are just creepy. Yeah. I don't know everyone at the show. So there are but I do gotta go, guys. Things. So I, I hate Mike, thanks for coming out. Thank you for, for this awesome cover. I'm not going to lie. Part of me is hoping cover. it doesn't sell. Um, but at the same time, I need it to sell. So, But I'm a, it's a win-win. Either I make the money or I get to keep it. So, well, if it sells, um, I hope it makes a nice, nice pretty penny for you and you get some good coin for it. Larry, and I've got Sean's original. I, I just... Man, I get to look at these covers and it just blows my mind. But Mike, I don't want to hold you up. Thanks so much for taking well, man, some yeah. time out. No, thanks. And, you guys. Know, I appreciate you having me. Yeah, have a great night. Thanks, you too. I'll talk to you soon. See you guys. See ya. That's the great Mike DeBalfo. Check him out with all his coffin comics work, uh, his indie work, um, Zenoscope work. Um, and you can check him out in my book. Uh, and just in time, we have our next guest coming on. <laughs> now, you guys are welcome to stay as long as you want, but I do understand if you're busy, if you have to go, I will not be offended. I just want you to know that, of course, I love talking with you. So um, our next guest. I, I, I got some ground turkey and beans that's been staring at me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta cook that. <laughs> well, listen, I don't want any sound effects during the show after those beans, so go for it. <laughs> You know, my, my body doesn't really work that that way with the beans thing for some reason. I don't I don't know. Lucky man. <laughs> the silent deadly ones. Gotcha. <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> Larry, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. I will talk to you on the flip side, man. Have a great night. Right, Congratulations on relaunching Tribe. Hey, thanks. See you later. Yep. <laughs> and um, our next guest is um nightwing artist apocalypse thunderbolts a lot of indie stuff um he's he's had the the um ability to stay at my house for a weekend and survive um he's a great artist originates from brazil but god knows where he lives now uh geraldo borges hey guys how are you doing hey, hey. how are you I'm I'm the living proof. Uh, that's no no problem. Uh, staying at home, I say at home feels home. That's that's okay. <laughs> you survived. I'm alive. You survived, right? I survived. I survived. You should, you should get you should have pins, Phil, that you give out. I survived a night at Phil's house. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah that sounds like a different connotation, though. If you look at the Hulk 340 homage by yes. Geraldo. Um, Geraldo did the lettering on that too, the incredible tragedy. Um, he did beautiful work on it. Uh, I came to him. I said, hey, I want to do this homage to this cover. Would you do it? He did it. He did a fantastic job. Um, I'm grateful for you for it. Uh, it did very. I actually just sold a couple off my website uh, this week uh, from you. And the funny thing is with Geraldo's cover, there was an error and it was at 72 DPI and I got 50 printed at low res Interesting. because the printer didn't come back and tell me this is low res. He just ran them off. It was weird. Um, so I've been selling them at a lower price, but they are misprints and I have some signed by Geraldo. Thank you. Uh, so reach out if you're interested in that. So that makes them um, collectors, collectors items. Because first they're a misprint and then they're signed by Geraldo. <laughs> Yes, and they are the first version of Tragedy before I had it recolored and redrawn. So they're very rare, actually. Mm. But I'm not selling them at a ridiculous price for it. I'm selling them at less price. Um, so maybe I'll make them worth it your money someday. Hope so. Um, well, you know this industry and the way it is right now. You know somebody's going to slab that thing and make some good money. <laughs> and, you know, I don't worry about what people do after I sell it because I put it at the price I was comfortable with. I, I don't. Some people do, and I, I, I understand that. They'll they'll raise their price because they feel you're going to go slab and make money off of it, and that's fine if that's what you want to do because they're making money off your name. I understand. Me, I don't care. It's like I will sell it what I'm comfortable with, and if you could turn around and sell it for 500 times more, good for you. You know, that's that's called free, 
free market and it's also uh, called good business. <laughs> yeah, I mean, do what you can. Um, so, Geraldo, you uh, tell us what you're up to right now. Yeah. Uh, first of all, congratulations to your tragedy art book, artist edition. I, I, I love this this kind of book. Uh, unfortunately, I have just one. Uh, I bought a um, uh, Born Again art edition. That's really awesome issue signed by Matthew Kelly. Uh, nice. Yes. Uh, but first of all, uh, nice to meet you, Sean. I, I love your work uh, on Iron Man and, and every, everything you, you did, you have done. In, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, man, I, I really love to, to do this cover, this, this how much to, to Incredible Hulk cover, uh, because uh, working with how much at least for at least for me it's a, a chance to, to understand the design of the of uh, in artists for example mcfarlane mcfarlane they discover and uh i tried to study a little bit how how to how he designed the, the cover and and then i like the, the result inclu including what's the, the name of the colorist of the discover uh maro zapata yeah, I love what he did because he he did the colors uh, like an old school colors. So I think yeah, I uh, asked him. I said I want to go classic. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, and I I had I had a uh, a close connection to to tragedy artists. Ricardo Ricardo is from my my state in Brazil. Uh, so I I really loved how. He improved his work uh, along the issues of tragedy. So it's, it's really great to to follow the artists since number one, since the very beginning of the the book. So thank you so much, Phil, because you are responsible to to development of these artists. So if Ricardo is drawing much much better, it's because of you. Well. Ricardo is awesome because he's always striving to be better. You know, he's he's one of those no ego guys that just wants to be better, <clears throat> and he keeps leveling up and he keeps moving forward. And I'm I'm grateful to work with him. I'm proud of working with him. Um, and I appreciate. You know, you have to understand. I had a specific image. What you see of tragedy is exactly what I wanted in my head, right? But I can't draw. So I have to go to Ricardo or, you know, artists like you, and I have to describe to Ricardo what I want and, and try to get picture references as much as I can, like for the cross stitching and stuff, you know, and give these detailed expressions and descriptions. And I have to tell you, he, by the second try, he absolutely encompassed what was in my head. And it was important to me that she looked the way I wanted her to look. I thought she, I think she has a, a unique design personally. I'm proud of the design. I design all my characters. Uh, and for a guy who can't draw worth a lick, I, 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 I'm I, proud. I think I, I, she looks great. Um, and uh, I get a lot of compliments from major artists that say this is a really cool looking design. So I feel like I did something right. Um, Carlos Rafael, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, sorry, Eric. I, I missed your your comment when uh, when he left. Oh, uh, my mother says hi, Geraldo. Oh, nice to meet you. He meet you. Yeah, she. Well, he sat there and had coffee with my mom at the table, and they've conversed quite a bit. So, <laughs> um, Man, so first of all, it's, uh, my apologies to my background. It's, my background is not so great as the Ralph. It's Ralph. Well, that's awesome, Sean. <laughs> yours, because this is the set of the show, so it has to be. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, I recently moved to Argentina right now. So I'm I'm living here in Buenos Aires uh, since two months ago. So my no, my first one Brazil, Chile, Argentina. Yes, my, my lord. Yes. Actually, I, I I lived in Brazil, so I moved to Chile, Santiago. After that, I moved to Argentina. But first of all, I've been living in Ushuaia, uh, extreme south 
of Argentina, very close to the Arctic continent. Uh, wow. I'm like, almost living there. So right now I'm living in Buenos Aires. The, 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 the same, I don't know if you know, for example, Alcatena. Do you know Alcatena, the artist? Enrique Alcatena, no? Alcatena drew the, the Batman Pirate. Uh, okay. An issue, but yeah. Ushuai, Guido Martinez, Ushuai, exactly. I live there. So your new nickname is Nomad? Huh? Your new nickname is Nomad. Nomad, yeah. <laughs> You Nomad, you, you you move, you keep oh, moving, you know. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, but let try me, living in New York. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you what I, I it came today. Awesome. Yeah, tell yeah. us, man. You're on Dick Tracy, Thunderbolts. You were doing Nightwing. Tell us about yes. what you're doing, and then I'm going to introduce our next yeah. guest. Uh, I think the first thing uh, I like to talk about is uh, um, a creator on the book I'm I'm releasing f uh, for, for Image Comics. It's called No One, uh, written by Kyle Higgins, Brian Salado, and I'm drawing the the book. Uh, we are finishing the the entire series because this is, this is a ten book, ten issues series. Uh, recently, we published number eight, and we have just two issues to finish the book. I'm really proud of this book. I'm work. Uh, I'm working with Dick Tracy right now. This is the, the number one, but oh, it's, nice. it's not the real number one. This is national preview for the comic shops. Uh, it's, it's very small uh, compared to the, uh, a real comic book. Uh, I see, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's that's a preview. Cool. Uh, of what it comes uh, in, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, this is Dick Tracy here. Uh, I haven't seen Dick Tracy in a while. Yeah. Very nice. It's good to see Dick. Yeah, Mad Cave uh, got the, the license to it, and they're, they're launching Dick Tracy. Very cool. Exactly. I got to uh, say, I'm still uh, waiting for my Dick Tracy watch, and they can <laughs> do it now, so I don't know why they haven't done it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's, that's here. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Um, I want you to I want you to continue telling me what you're gonna do, but I don't want to leave my, my guest backstage. So I'm gonna pull him on and and then finish and continue. Okay. Um, our next guest, by the way, uh, amazing artist. Um, I don't know if he gets enough credit either. I've had the great privilege of two covers with him. He's a really nice guy. I mean, he's worked on a lot of stuff, and I look forward to his future projects. Without further ado, Kevin West. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to keep you backstage so long, Kevin, but I figured oh, no, you'd move okay. around and take care of it. I'm situated anyway, so I'm all good. I'm all good. You know, <clears> setting so, up my shot and whatnot. There you go. Yeah. You got to get your profile. You got to set it up, man. Yeah. I am setting up my lighting. I'm working, you know, working up different, you know, the umbrella reflectors and shit. You know? <laughs> I'm looking all good. <laughs> I know exactly where you're coming from, Kevin, because uh, I set up my show a certain way. And ever since I lost my light that used to be in front of me, I get this weird blurred out Ralph now, and it just weirds to me because I'm like something's wrong. I just look uh, even yeah. paler. <laughs> this is true enough. There, there is a very you know ethereal quality to you. Right now. Very cool. Um, to finish up with what Geraldo was saying, please go ahead. Tell us what else you're you're involved in, and then we're going to talk with Kevin too. Yeah, I uh, uh, I don't I don't forget to mention uh, the writers of G Tracy, Alex Segura, Michael Moretti. He's they are doing a, a wonderful job uh, writing D uh, Tracy because it's it's a kind of uh, following the classic vibe of Chester Go, but at the same time we are doing something different because uh, it's a little bit noir. It's a little bit black and white stuff. So you got, you got my attention. I love Dick Tracy. I love noir. I love detectives. Uh, you know, so so keep talking. <laughs> you, you you will love it. Uh, I'm quite sure you, you will love it. Um, oh. man, Just the fact that, you, that Dick Tracy's back. You can see by how excited <laughs> I am. I'm like, dude. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm really love crime stories, you know. Uh, uh, like, for example, um, uh, I don't know the name, the English name of this movie. In Portuguese, the movie is called Magna Mortifera. 
is a is a movie uh mel gibson then glover how, how, let's a weapon let's a weapon it's a weapon yeah, yeah it's a weapon, it's it's a weapon. weapon. Yeah. That i kind of move I, I really like to to watch because we, we have uh uh a good guy a bad guy a, a bad cop and good cop so this, this dynamic of the the characters are so great and we are we are doing something something here uh similar here in, in the tracy the tracy is a good guy we find it's a good guy the good cop but we have uh some kind of bad cops uh in the story but uh, at the same time uh we published the last issue of thunderbolts for marvel uh written by jackson lansing and colin kelly the hype mind and I, I love to do this book because it's very different from Dick Tracy. It's very different from the one because both of them are crime stories and the Thunderbolts is a very superhero story. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I will miss these characters because it's just four issues. Uh, but I really love to, to draw Dr. Dunn. I, I, I never drawn this character I shun. I think he, he drew the character so much time. Uh, a lot of times, uh, but I, I, I haven't drawn. I haven't drawn Doctor Doom, uh, Kingpin, uh, and wow. and Red Skull. So it's so fun to. It was so fun to to work with Marvel and on Thunderbolts, mm -hmm. and that's it. I, that's what I'm doing. I've been doing these last couple months. Man, you say that a lot of stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and before that, Nightwing. Yeah. yeah. Before, before that, yeah. Right. And then last Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. We forgot about this. <laughs> no. Yeah, but you know, it goes back to what I was saying. Everybody that's on today are very humble people. You know, you're all top tier artists with top tier resumes, and yet you wouldn't know it talking to you. No egos. And I, I appreciate that greatly. Ah, mm. you're too kind. Mm. Well, no, you guys are. I'm I'm a little nobody publisher. <clears throat> who does nothing for your career i mean you know on my limited budgets and and you 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 come in and you make my books look unbelievable i mean what you did on uh tragedy which i'm going to show the cover kevin is amazing and then what you just did on arcane syndicate everybody's telling me it's they're they're it's like one of the best covers they've ever seen so <clears throat> Yeah, you I am um, that arcane syndicate out there, and people were just <laughs> yeah. I'm getting tons of messages about what Kevin did. Mm -hmm. um, Monsters, baby, it's my life. <laughs> yeah. But um, to show you again, you know, Sean Geraldo, and then show you Kevin's covers that are in this book that you need to get funded. Uh, we're 105 dollars away from funding, but oh, fantastic! Uh, I'm hoping. I'm really hoping to um, to get a good chunk of money for Pop out of this. Again, uh, this is Geraldo Borges. Is, sorry, it's a big book for me to hold. Sorry. Um, cover of the homage to Hulk 340. I'm just so impressed with what he did with the lettering and everything. It's just beautiful. Uh, really great retro cover. And then, of course, we have um, Sean. Uh, here's Larry again, by the way who was with us a little while ago and just had to go. Sorry, I'm trying to hold it up. It's a big, heavy book that is worth I mean, trying to hold it up. I'm like, dang, that book is big. And there's Sean. <laughs> Sean added some gray tones that just, oh, man, it's so good. Um, I'm telling you, Breath of the Dragon just looks unbelievable in that. And then there is this. And, you know, I loved this. I love Kevin's detailed lines. But I love that the scan came out showing the different inked gradients because it just shows you the original art. Yeah. This is I mean, sorry. <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm gonna try to um show a big picture. <gasps> Why did it do that? It was supposed to go to go single to screen. Shot, yeah. Why did it do that? Come on, you son of a gun. This is like what happened. It's, like... not, it's, not doing that. <laughs> it's well, like we're trapped in a parallel dimension. Yeah, fuck. Uh, <laughs> this here is Kevin's for book four. I mean, look at the breath of the dragon, wow. the, the inking, the shadowing. Look at her, just incredible detailed lines. Yeah. I, I really, 
I always said I think Sean is one of the most underrated artists in the industry. I have to, I think I have to add Kevin to that because Kevin, I mean, there isn't anything that you do that isn't just absolutely clean and beautiful and detailed. And you should all does okay too, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um Actually, Geraldo, I met at New York Comic Con years ago, and I was doing a jam piece. He's on two jam pieces behind me on the wall. Yes. Someday I got to meet Kevin in person, uh, and Sean's on a bunch of them too. And um, I didn't. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't familiar with you as an artist, but you were sitting with Will Conrad, who's a friend of mine, and some other people, and I was looking at your work. I'm like, wow, this guy's this guy's really good. Who is this guy? So you drew a couple. I had you do two on on the jam for me. And I was like, when to go and somebody else? And I was like, wow, this is just amazing. And ever since then, you and I talked and we, we got to know each other. And then you stayed at my house the year before last for um, New York Comic Con. And I didn't get a chance to draw a permanent uh, mustache on you when you were sleeping. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and Kevin, not too long ago, I think it was last year, I reached out to on on uh, Facebook. I didn't know you, but I was following you for many years, and um, very gracious answered me right away. And he was interested, and I saw what. And uh, let me tell you, Kevin. Oh my God! Not only does he do great work, but he turns around a cover in a blink. You know, I mean, don't say Kevin. Keep that on the down low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, going to tell people, I'll come, I'm running behind now. <laughs> All right, let's just say that he'll meet your deadline as long as it's a reasonable deadline. We'll do that. And just amazing, amazing work. Um, so Kevin, obviously, you know his history, but tell us, uh, you know, about you, what you do, what you're doing, what you, I don't know what you can share right now, but go for it. Um. Well, in um... – the last few projects I've done, I've, I've been really happy with because they've actually been stuff I've just been having a really good time working on. And when I was doing that um, Iron Maiden uh, Legacy, it was a, supposed to be a three round thing. No, we ended up going two because we got derailed when COVID hit mm. and uh, thought we were good. I started drawing, you know, the parts of the last issue. But um, after I got about 14 pages in, I got the cease and desist letter. And <laughs> then by the time, you know, everything kind of came back online, um, Iron Maiden, I think it kind of lost interest in the whole project. It kind of had its legs kicked out from under it. So the third part never ran. But I really just enjoyed doing that, that that Eddie character that they have and whatnot. That was just You've seen fun. what you posted. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah that, that was big fun. That was big, big fun. And I always thought one thing that I, I had a little bit of an advantage on when I got to draw him that other, because I mean, how many great artists have done Eddie pieces? But all of those things have been like posters or covers or whatever. So he's always constantly either screaming or grimacing, and that's all you get. Because that's just, you know, money shot, Eddie. I had to show him showing from emotions and whatnot and going through some right. different, um, you know, agitations and stuff. So it was I, I got to have a little more range with him. And I, I thought that was kind of neat. So if, if nothing else, that's my claim to fame. It's a more you know, <laughs> the, the other side of Eddie to a degree. But I really loved um really love working on that book. I started working on a book after that that I was having fun with. Um, but trouble with the publisher and it's gone south and it most likely isn't going to come to light, but uh, we'll still up in the I'm air sorry. with that, where that goes. Yeah, you know what? It, it, I was I actually, I was really surprised. It was the same guy I'd worked with on the uh, Iron Maiden stuff as well. And so we had a history and I, I, you know, it just ended up going the way it did. And I was really kind of surprised. I wasn't more aware, but um, the thing I'm working on now, I'm super excited about. I'm doing an issue of uh, judge dread. Uh, story for 2000 AD. Nice. Yeah, I'm crazy excited about that. He was definitely on my short list of characters I wanted to do uh, at least once <laughs> before my pro career ended. So uh, it'll be I'm, the first, really first time I buy a Judge Dredd book. Uh, you know what? It's it's really it's it's cool. It's fun. It's like I'm I'm kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of scared to tell you the truth. I I, I don't blame you. It's just. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my god, it's like England's version of Batman over there for crying out loud. Yeah, I'm but like, you're gonna uh, do no pun intended. You're gonna do him absolute justice. 
Um, I'm sure I'm getting cranked up for nothing, but I always do. But <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> no, I, I guess that's what keeps you humble, awesome. right? <clears throat> Yeah, this one was uh, this. This is a big one. I'm, I was excited. I'm excited about you know being able to do this one. So, um, and then past that, you know, we'll see what happens. I got another thing that's on deck, but it's it's you know way too early to start talking about. It's not even we're still dotting the i's and crossing the t's on it kind of thing. So it's not a thing yet. But in in the aid of good salesmanship, big teaser, it could be big. <laughs> You know, at some point when you're closer to launching Judge Dredd, if you ever want to come on and do like an hour show just about you and, and Judge Dredd and your career, please, I'd love to hang out and talk with you. You know, <clears throat> dedicate, a, dedicate a whole show to you. That'd be awesome. Well, there's no one that likes talking about me more than me. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm actually, I've been doing everything I can to recover my voice. I lost my voice today uh, and it's a lot better than it was. And I can swear I saw a voodoo doll in better. my wife's closet with with pins in the throat. So, <laughs> <laughs> and Geraldo, you know my wife. <clears throat> yes. My, my better half. So. But actually, you have a, a a beautiful family. Everything, everybody, everybody. Your your daughters, your wife, your mother. Uh, just just you i'm not so <laughs> person. But that's what i hear a lot but i think i'll keep them i don't know if they'll keep me but i'll keep family is not 100 percent perfect you know <laughs> there's no accounting for their taste right man thank, uh, i need to leave right now but thank you so much for for being here for having me here thank you Ralph, kevin congratulations to your beautiful art and feel long life to tragedy. I, I really love how you, you've been working with the character. It's very difficult to to keep the, the quality yeah. of, of a book, and you are doing so well. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And let's see, let's meet uh, this year in New York Hong Kong. Absolutely. You know, you, you always got an invite here. Exactly. Ronaldo, thanks for coming out. I know you have to run to Thank the airport. You but Thank you I guys. appreciate you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, now we finally got rid of him. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, so that's big news, having you on Judge Dredd. I'm very excited about that. I mean, I, I Judge Dredd is a character I've always been interested in, but every – I mean, I know Bolland and everything. You know, he's a wonderful artist, but – a lot of every time I looked at it, it was art that just wasn't appealing to me at the time. But seeing Kevin tied to this, I'm absolutely on board. Absolutely <laughs> on board. No, I listen. I love your work, man. I, you know, I I started recognizing you. I didn't when I collected books in the '90s and early 2000s stuff. I didn't really pay attention to artists as much. So I didn't realize it was you I was looking at when I was looking at stuff. You know, uh, and there then you start so to, many of us. Yeah, the, and then I started to go back and go, oh my god, that was that was that guy. Wow. And yeah. uh you put two and two together and you just become a big fan. And I absolutely love your work. I remember <clears throat> you did a, a Scarlet Witch uh, headshot pinup and you posted on Facebook once. This was years ago, and I was like, Oh my god, this is incredible. Wow. And that's when I put two and two together and realized that I had been following you in comics for years and didn't realize it. So <laughs> That's how it is. Uh, you, well, you know what, though, I'm I'm really happy that um, I think with with just where I'm at right now, I'm I'm I still feel really good about you know where I'm at skill wise. Um, I think I think my stuff's improved over the years, and um, and so as long as it stays, you know, it continues to evolve and, and gets better, or as long as it doesn't step back. The second it starts stepping backwards. Then I'm right. done. I'm doing a Barry Sanders. I'm out. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you want to go out on top. And obviously, you got a lot left in you. And uh, you're just going to be showing off your chops very soon again on uh, with 2000 AD, which is awesome. Would you mind if I showed also the Arcane Syndicate cover that you did? No, by all means. Go right ahead. Um, no, I was really is, happy with uh, how that one came out, actually. Dude, uh, like I, I thought of the concept and I was like, you know what?
because of what you do with tragedy, I thought you'd be perfect with the with the headshots in the background, right? Which and you obviously give above and beyond. You go way more than I ho could hope for. Uh, but this is getting a lot of praise. I'm going to show the black and white in a minute, but this is the finished colored cover. Um, and I mean, just look at the detail. It's incredible. You know, and everybody's got a different face. Yeah. Well, big ups on the color. Well, you know, I, I work with Alex Sinclair, Chris Sotomayor, and a guy named Febri Ferdion, who, um, despite not being a household name, is absolutely perfect. He's great, and he did that uh, coloring because I have to do you justice. Um, I'm not going to do that to you. You know, I mean, you're putting your name on my little book, and that, and you're helping me. The least I can do is I, I have to do you justice, right? I have to do you proud, and I have to make sure you are happy with what your name is going on. So this is the black and white. I mean, look at that. It has such a Just classic incredible. horror feel to it. Especially I mean, beautiful detail. horror feel to it. <clears throat> but you know he's a fan because oh, look at the teeth on those Feratu. He exactly knew how the fangs go. <laughs> I, I didn't <laughs> even mention it to him. I knew damn well that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go with the rat teeth on him. <laughs> yes. And they are the feral group. So it was just per just perfect up and down. I'm getting a lot of praise for that. Uh the campaign is at $395 of a five hundred dollar goal. Um that goal is covering the cost that it, uh, I had to expend in formatting, excuse me, and printing the one. Mm -hmm. that i have but honestly guys i need i need your support my dad is not doing well oh, let's, stage let's, let's, four no. cancer let's talk heart about issues where do you need to be pneumonia. in order for you for for the book to be comfortable because i know i know what your funding goal is because mm -hmm. you know we, we already know what kickstarter is we need to do a funding goal so we can get it out there and then where do we need to be all right truth be told because I want to pay fair wages to artists, I'm not looking for any skimping, right? It's a 110-page graphic novel. It's going to be 15 grand to make the book. Right. And it cannot be told in chapters. You read the story, Ralph. Did I give it to you? Yeah, Papa, yeah. Did I give Papa a script to you? So you yeah. know by reading the script that it has to be a graphic novel. It has to be one self-contained story. It's a Silver oh, Age yeah. tale. It's written like a Silver Age tale. It works better in <clears throat> one contained story. I can see it as issues, <clears throat> but I think it works better as a one contained graphic novel. Um, you know, you did a great job writing it. I, again, like I was saying earlier, I, I feel like, you know, as you're reading through this, you're not going to see what's coming, coming. You don't. You, you think you know what this is about, and you don't, and you get blindsided. The funny thing mm -hmm. is, when I was writing it, I wasn't writing it about my dad. I was just writing it. It was later on that I realized I was writing about me and my dad. Sounded. My dad and I, not to get too personal, but my dad and I, it was, it was tumultuous. Um, and only in the last three years have I had a relationship with my dad and now, unfortunately, I'm um, losing my dad and it's, it's hard. And he's a very strong, proud man. He's a man who was bench pressing 165 pounds just five months ago. And now we can't even get up and walk. And it's been a very rapid decline. And <clears throat> he was rushed to the ER today. And I'm not saying this, he's mad at me actually, cause he doesn't want me. He's, he's upset. Then I'm, he says, I don't want you using this as a marketing ploy. I assure you, this is not a marketing ploy. I'm not one of those people. That would be despicable and disgusting. I'm just telling you honestly where I need the money to go. You don't have to back. I'm not trying to guilt anybody into anything. Uh, everybody's got their plight. Everybody's got a sick loved one. Everybody's trying to struggle to pay their rent. So please, I'm not guilting you. I'm just explaining to you where the money is going. So this campaign right now, Anything I can get towards that $15,000 goal is huge because then when I do the Papa campaign, I don't have to have a $15,000 goal. It's not going to be met. Um, if I can get it down to where I only have to do a $5,000 goal or a $4,000, it would be helpful. But in order to pay artists fairly, in order to get this book in his hands before it's too late, I need fifteen grand. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm not... 
I'm not doing any GoFundMe's because this isn't me looking to pay rent and feed my family. It's something that emotionally is important to me and my father. Mm-hmm. But that's not a reason to do a GoFundMe. So I want you to get something for your return. Mm-hmm. All I'm going to tell you is this. As far as this book, I also have original art pieces um, from Bill Sienkiewicz and some other big names that I'm selling that you can buy the original art and own published work that I did not want to sell. I own everything. Ask Kevin. I buy the original art. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, I do it for several reasons. One, I, I'm a fan and I love Kevin's work and everybody's work and I want to own it. Two, yes, creative control. And three, what is Kevin going to do sitting on my abstract, my obscure character in his portfolio? It's, you know, it's going to sit there. I'd rather him make money off of it and buy it from him because it means something to me. He's not letting it collect dust in a portfolio because it's obscure. And, you know, he's making money. I'm happy to have it. It's a win for everyone. And I think it builds good relationships with people. <clears throat> it does. Yeah, I think so, definitely. But, um, yeah, I I don't know what to expect from this campaign. I could easily have someone buy the Bill Sienkiewicz, and this thing is blowing through the roof right away or a bunch of pieces. Um, so who knows? You put all of that into the, you know, the tiers? Yeah. I'm going to show the campaign after. I just didn't want to do it while I have all these big name artists coming on, spending their time with me, uh, because I'm grateful for that and I didn't want to uh, waste their time. Uh, Are you allowed to tell us when are we expecting to see um, Judge Dredd premiere with your art? Uh, I do not know. (laughs) Um, No, I'm honestly, I have. um, It's it's a it's a very loose project schedule wise I, I literally have um the end of the first it's a 20 page story cut in half so the first 10 pages are due the first because that's like publish this thing i guess it's like i guess that magazine's a bit of an anthology kind of thing right. each month there's multiple stories in it oh nice and um so uh the first 10 pages are due at the beginning of may and then the second 10 are due at the end of june so I have plenty of time to, you know, really kind of do the layouts, let it sit for a bit, look at it again, go, that sucks, tear it up and start different things and take another crack at it. Um, you know, and on a few pages, I've been kind of like, God, how am I going to do this thing? And I start immediately to think this way, but then after having a bit of time and I don't do it, kind of like, wait a minute, bing, light comes on. And I, I came up with a much better way that's, that's you know, has, has more kick and more power to it. So it's I, it's good that it's not a have to barrel through it scenario. Right. right. But, uh, but on the other hand, this entire business is barrel through it. And so now all of a sudden it's kind of like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with my free time. I'm kind of thinking like, well, I don't have to actually work on it. Ah, I got how long? <laughs> So well, don't get caught in that trap, right? Don't get caught in that trap. Yeah. I'll be here on April 15th going, shit, I got to draw 10 pages. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you doing the inking chores as well? Yes. Yeah. You know, pretty much the European stuff, they don't, um, I don't think I'm speaking out of shop. They pretty much, it's it's the artist is just the artist on the thing. And for the most part, the they, prefer, they prefer, yeah, they prefer if you go all three steps. Oh, okay. Um, um, but they, they do have a, a delineation between, you know, your black and white art and your color art. So um, my hope right now is a, there's a, a British colorist I met a couple of years ago when I was at France on a convention thing. Uh, his name was Dylan Teague. Really open. We can get him. I, I chatted with him and he said the schedules may line up, you know, depending on when everything comes in. So I hope that comes out. I got no idea if it will or not, though. But So the, do they leave that up to you to pick the colorist? No, no I never ever saying anything. Okay. Yeah. No. It's 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 rare when I get to ask for something uh, like that. I I can make suggestions. I don't I don't feel I'm speaking out of turn if I just say, hey, would it be right. cool if we get this guy? Would that be possible? Kind of thing. But it's not even just a question of if it's possible. It's also a question of budgets and everything else. You know, right. because naturally I'm going to want, hey, can we get the very best guy you have? <laughs> well, I mean, we can't put the very best well, guy we have on every project we have. <laughs> well, it's funny because like Mike DeBalfa was on earlier. He doesn't like to ink his work. He likes it to stay as pencil. So I got to get a colorist that can color over pencil. And, you know, he's very detailed, so it's possible. And I know he's 
choosy about who he'd like to color. And I always respect that and understand that. And the truth is, as long as I can afford it, you're better served to listen to your artist who's yeah. saying, I like this colorist, because he knows or she knows that colorist compliments them and their line work well. It's and true. you want yeah, the best true. out of that artist. True. It's the same with a penciler who says, I'd like to work with this inker. If you can afford it, you should listen to that because you want that dynamic team. You want that Scott Williams, Jim Lee, right? With yeah, Alex sure. Sinclair. I mean, it's a, you know, you only get your best when you trust your artist, when they're telling you, I know my style better than anybody, and this is what's going to work with me. Yeah. Oh, you no. and especially, yeah, especially too, when you're having to, when you are having to work at it in, in a yeah. farm system like that, where it kind of gets passed on from one to the next. But as I was saying, I think, I think the European model just in general is uh, there isn't really the pencil art thing. Um, it's, it's black and white. If you are doing pencil, then I imagine we expect it to be more rendered tonal pencil kind of stuff. Right. Um, and I've, I've had stuff shot um, in, in the past, a couple of things I did when the deadlines were so late which wasn't my fault. I came in to finish up it just because it was already in the tank. But um, uh, I, I've had things shot directly from pencils uh, a couple of times as well. And it's... it's you detailed to, enough that you can do that. Oh, yeah. My, well, here's the thing. And just between us, they, they're, <laughs> you know, I ink my stuff, but I draw with a pen. And inkers mm. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, really? I, yeah, I'm not. If you look at like the, the read the book on disciplines of fine inking, yeah, I'm doing none of it. <laughs> how how the stuff any of looks? That. How the stuff looks with the with the black and the, and the markers is whatnot is exactly how it looks like when I pencil it. Okay, so that's cool. All right, but there's no room for error then. Well, you got white out. Oh, yeah, I put a lot of white on it. Well, you, you know what? You've seen the boards. You've seen the boards. I got gouache flying everywhere. <laughs> the, wait till it gets old. The board will get old. It'll yellow a bit. You'll just be big chunks of white all over the thing. It'll look like some vintage Romita Gil Kane stuff. <laughs> but man, Heads I, painted out. <laughs> but I love having your original in my collection. Uh, it's, it's great. I my wife has accommodated so much and there's going to be a point where I want to do a tragedy cover gallery and frame all these pieces up. Um, I really don't want to get rid of any of this art. Damn. I don't want to, but I'm not selling Kevin's by the way. That's not for sale, but <laughs> I see here's the thing about Mike, the Balthos. I do not want to sell that. But the reason why I'm willing to is because it was one of the highest selling covers. Yeah. That because <clears throat> let's face it, everything is NSFW these days, right? Yeah. And I asked him to tone it down, which he did, but that's about as close to NSFW as I'm ever gonna get. And that campaign did the most. He sold a ton of books. So there's a market for that cover specifically. And that's the only reason why I'm looking to sell his cover, whereas I'm not selling Sean's, I'm not selling, selling Kevin's, and I'm not selling Larry's. Um, you know, desperate times, desperate measures. But yeah, um, I literally own everything. I even own fan art. I buy fan art. Yeah. You know, people do a fan art and send me if I if I think it looks really good and I like it. I go, How much? I just I'm a big fan of art. I can't draw worth a lick, but I I have a good eye for art and art direction. At least I've been told that by Scott Hanna and some other other people. But I think I, I agree. I'd agree with that. I can't draw though. But when I I'd look agree at with that too, <laughs> <laughs> when I look at things like for example, what Kevin does, and you look at the detail, but just that if you look at the Arcane Syndicate cover, the fabric, he gave the motion and the movement in the fabric. That is a very difficult skill that only a pro can pull off. And you did a wonderful job on the fabric uh, on Dracula. And also just the, the, the hair flow on a lot captures you know that 
you know that those universal um monsters really well it's almost like a, you, you can see it as a poster for for that movie well thank you, you guys are too kind thank you very much well i mean first of all kevin is a horror fan he's storyboarded for creep show he's done uh, you know he's done a ton of stuff you go to the best for what you want to do period my people give me praise and i tell them if you want to say i'm a good writer i'm grateful but my real talent is knowing who to surround myself with because it's a visual medium and whether i'm the best writer or the worst writer you have no clue unless that cover pulls you in absolutely you know? absolutely and i i do i don't mean to pat myself on the back but i do think i am good at who i who i approach to do the work with me and you guys elevate me. I mean, obviously, it helps to have a Kevin West name on it, but first and foremost, it's it's what that cover is. It's just amazing. So. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? And I cannot say uh, enough about um, Ferdy. What did you say his name was? Ferdian. Uh, February Ferdian. Fedri, got it, got it, got it. I want to miss. Fedri, yeah. yeah. He he did he did a uh, a fantastic job on that. It's um. He captures the mood, the the lines that he drops back, all of it, it, it works really well. It's really effective. And um and, and especially when it did come to that um you do that fade to in the in the black and white, the black top section where the logo and all that stuff is gonna be. And it was great that he dropped that back so it doesn't look like this wall hanging on top of everything. So and he didn't muddy up your lines. Uh, that too, that happens a lot these days. And I think actually, you know, for, there was a while in the, um, I, I was, I was working for, uh, Marvel mm -hmm. and DC and Malibu and Acclaim and Wildstorm and on and on. Um, and around 98, then I had, uh, uh, stopped because it was right after the bubble burst. Half the editors that I knew got fired um books were starting to get canceled and all of a sudden it was kind of like uh i'm having trouble finding work we had just had um our son the year before that and then all, it was just kind of like okay now i, I need to which which is more important here any money i'm making is just paying for daycare so that right. was pointless so all right here's what we're going to do instead so i quit doing comics i did the Mr. Mom thing. And then I was just doing illustration projects that I could do in a day or two tops. Nothing that would take three weeks to draw. Right. And, uh, and then that's what I did until the, our daughter came shortly after that. And then until she was actually in first grade. So in school all day long, that's when I started coming back to doing comic stuff. So that would have been in the early 2000s. And um, I did some stuff for Wildstorm then as well. But it was at that point in the early 2000s where because color had had changed from the time that I'd left in just those handful of years, um, I started going to something that was a little more line work and a little less of the, uh, you know, the feathering, the detail work. Uh, just because they were basically doing that with the color. So when I did Nightmare on Elm Street, it was basically that. The shadows and everything, it was it was just blockier sections of shadow. It was still all mm -hmm. clean and all, all that kind of stuff. But there just wasn't so much of the feathering all over the place. Um, and then as as things had moved on, and I, and I just started to kind of shift back to more of just the more detailed stuff, which is ultimately what I did in the very beginning. Once I was there for a while, obviously, uh, when you're working professionally, you, you have to, to a degree, pay attention to what the house style is, right? You got to know what's selling. You can or you, you can sit there and be proud. Oh, I'm just going to do what I do. Okay, well, do what you do over there while the rest of us are over here making money. Because it's, it's just not going to sell. It's just not how commercial art works. Right. So some of the stuff, as far as like the way I was doing the rendering back then, was kind of that that Jim Lee vein of, of rendering where you're kind of doing it's a little more of an industrial uh, art approach where you're kind of doing that line work that fades down to the outsides and everything. So um, <clears throat> and and same as everybody else. And that's what I was doing. So, you know, Phil, when you were saying that there was, you know, you're looking at all the 90s artists and whatnot, and it's there was so many of us. And unfortunately, most of us had that same kind of um, 
edge to it when it came to the rendering parts of it. Those uh, those elements were to everybody's art in some degree, one way or the other. And so I came away from doing that then and then just started doing more of just the kind of stuff that I'm doing now is probably just the most, I don't know, uh, natural to me uh, that I've, I've drawn all along. And then some of the other alterations were, you know, concessions based on the time and what was marketable at any given period. So I'm happy with that. And I'm also happy now that at least, you know, the 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 heavier, uh, not necessarily the photo stuff. I mean, there's a place for it. I wouldn't want any everything to look like it's, you know, right. photo reference like some of those books are. But in some of the stuff, I mean, it's, that's fantastic. It's And I like that there's variety with that now. Um, but I do like that, that using blacks again has become uh, popular because for the longest while, everything was starting to look like coloring book art. You know, it's just line work and colors. Right. And because and like, you know, when, when you, we were doing color, then all of a sudden, you know, they'd be burying the line work in heavy, muddy tones. And it's like, why do you even bother? You know, you see something like and it, it still happens to this day to, you know, you still see like um, like if you see like David Finch's black and white stuff or whatever. And then you see what it looks like when it's colored. It's like a lot of that just gets just gets lost. That texture is just gone. Yep. And uh, and that's unfortunate. So so yeah. The, the, on, in the particular case on this arcane thing, that the, the color worked out perfectly because because yes, he he worked with all the line work and he worked with all the the shadowed regions, read where the light sources were coming from perfectly, and and really just nailed it. He just did a fantastic job. Well, I'm glad when I hear that because, like I said earlier, I would never want to um, do your work an injustice. And no disrespect to any anyone specifically, but sometimes, you know, I, I'm sure you're an artist and you pour your heart into something and you do a wonderful job and you sit back and you go, you know what, I, I like it, it looks good. And we know you artists can be hard on yourself. And then you look at the colorist and they they didn't get where the <clears> – <throat> they didn't understand – uh, where your shading and your light source was. They didn't get the washout features like in the clothing and the movement of the clothing or in facial features. And and it's got to be infuriating as an artist to I put, you know, all this time into this. I'm proud of it. And then it just gets, it's like just going up to a, p a painting and smearing paint all over it. It's like, what the hell is going on here? And I know that happens. And I just don't want to be one of those guys. And if I ever am, I want an artist to tell me and say, Dude, I'm not happy. <clears throat> you know, I'm not. I, I'm sorry, but I, I don't think it represents me well. That is important to me, because every you're only as good as the last thing you do, and that's your resume that you're putting on every cover that's going out there. Uh, very true, very true. And, and on top of that, too, and especially when you're in the, the comic biz, which is this kind of a farm type of system with components. Mm -hmm. Um, you get enough of that happening to you at any level, penciling, inking, whatever, whatever part of it you're doing. If the other parts are gummed up often enough, it'll hurt your career in the long run. Sure. I was about to say that because I've seen. And like, look, a, I, a I don't want this to say where it just goes really bad and the other person yeah. gets the, the flack for it. And you're like, but that's <clears> not that <throat> not his art. That's what the other guys do. <laughs> uh, and yeah. 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 And they that, don't that get that. Is, Oh my gosh! And the and the biggest thing um, had always had always been the direct relationship with the penciler and the inkers. Yeah. And uh, God, I've I've heard a lot of um, negative commentary on some stuff, and I'm like, yeah, well, it didn't look like that when it left my house. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Talk to this other guy. <laughs> Thanks for right. putting my name on that. <laughs> and and I hate I hate to to say this, and I don't mean this in, in an insulting way. But when you're a, a well-established artist as yourself and you're doing a cover for a, a small-time indie publisher like, say, me, if I don't have the colors right or if I make your work look bad, it's extra bad on your part When you're because Marvel and DC editors are going to be like, what are you doing? You're putting up sub, subpar work for small publishers nobody knows. It doesn't. It looks even worse for you. So at the very least, being a small-time publisher, I have to put out a professional product where they say, all right, we don't know who this guy is, but obviously he knows what he's doing and he's working with quality people, yeah. as opposed to you reaching down, they're looking at it as me reaching up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does that make yeah. any sense? Oh, completely. Sure. 
Sure. And so, it also showcases you because you know you're able to make this product um, the, what it's supposed to be with uh, right. artists like that. Well, I mean, why get Kevin to do a cover if you're just going to screw it up and and it's not Kevin's work anymore anyway? That just never makes sense to me. But why bother? I could get anybody then. You know, but I went to Kevin specifically for what I wanted, and and that's the whole point. <clears throat> you know, again, as a small publisher, I don't care if you like me or hate me or <clears throat> or whatever. But I hope that you respect what I'm doing and you take me seriously as a publisher. That's all, because we're all trying to make a name for ourselves in this industry. And even if you are already a name, you're still always proving yourself. Unfortunately, that's the industry. Yeah, you know, like you said, all the editors are gone that you knew. You're proving yourself all over again. And should you have to? No. But sadly, that's the reality. So um, stay humble, keep working hard, and be as professional as you can be. And that's what I try to do with, with Philbo Publishing. You may not always like everything I say, but I promise you every book I put out at least stands on its own if it's on that rack in a comic store. And that's all I can, that's all I can do. Well, and it's it's all it's all you need to do ultimately, right. because it all comes down to reaching the audience. So you just have to take every step you possibly can to try and make sure that it will reach as as big a chunk of audience as possible. So the story can be shared. So it's uh, yeah, it's everybody. It's like it's all one big everyone. You know, from this entire operation, it's all one big unit be, between from the creative part of it to the sales part of it to the publishing part of it. Right. And if everybody isn't you know on the same page with what exactly is sure end result be. I think that, and that's how you end up with these skewed things going on. When one thing gets completely overlooked, is glaringly obvious, and it's like, no, everything you want to do from this part on isn't going to happen because you just screwed up that part back there. Right. <laughs> I agree. It's got to be a well-oiled machine from top to bottom, and and ego's got to be put aside. Um, you had read Diary of Dread, <clears throat> and I was actually nervous to give it to you with your background in horror and creep show and everything else. Um, so I was like, oh, I, you know, hopefully he, uh, he doesn't think it's toilet paper, but, uh, <laughs> you came back with a good review. I mean, you know, I, and an honest review and, and, uh, I appreciated it and it just helps me. I don't, <clears throat> I don't want to be placated. I want the honest truth. You know, that's why I went to Peter David with tragedy because Peter is going to put his foot in your ass if it's not good. Yeah. And, and you know what, even when you'll probably move just for the hell of it anyway. <laughs> yeah yeah right exactly you yeah. know peter yeah. so hey, this looks great but let me, let me yeah here's my and anyway. when he said that tragedy was well written it's better than most of the things out there i almost shit myself so i mean fantastic. you know fantastic yeah so uh, i i appreciate but again if he came back and said it's crap and it needs this i would take the look at that because i want to be better my ego is not about me it's about putting out professional quality books and i know where they need work i know where they need because i go to people who are going to tell me but i do know this <clears throat> i don't know if i'm a, a great writer but i think i'm a good storyteller and i think you need to decide by buying the books and trying them out and tell me i'm not going to sell you on me i'm going to say give it a shot and find out and if you think it's great, come on back. If you don't, I thank you for trying. And I hope you find stuff you do enjoy. But that's the fun of indie. For, for low investments, you can buy these books and you might find the new thing that you love. So Very true. <clears throat> by the way, our last two guests are here. Um, <clears throat> they are gentlemen that I've worked closely with for a long time. And uh, they're awesome people. Um, one of them, I don't know if he's all there in the head, but it's all right. We like him, and, and uh, <laughs> he's laughing because he knows who I'm talking about. Uh, with all seriousness, we've got another Kevin, Kevin Stewart, who's another big horror fan. What's going on? So I, I, I come into hearing about getting oiled up in feet and asses. What was I mean? Not perfect timing, apparently. <laughs> Phil was sharing a stream you running here, Phil. <laughs> You know, we reach all audiences here, so you know, we don't want to. We don't want to, um, you know, um, alienate anybody. So we we hit all the topics. I mean, you had me. You had me when you said that. I was excited to come on. <laughs> yeah. 
<clears throat> Kevin Stewart, Kevin West, Kevin West, Kevin Stewart, you know Raphael. And um, our final guest for the evening um, from Florida, the man himself, they killed Kenny. What's up? Kenny Calderon. Do you hear us? It's like Hello? I'm not surprised. <laughs> Are you there? We've had we've hacked his webcam. He's not supposed to be here us right now. Oh, there you go. He's <laughs> doing, only, he's doing only fans at the same time. <laughs> <It's only fans. laughs> okay, I know I was I was caught up doing something else while I was waiting. Um, Kenny, you meet Kevin West. Kevin West, meet Kenny. Hello. A pleasure. A pleasure. <laughs> Big fan um, of Kevin's work. I follow his stuff. I see his posts all the time. Beautiful, beautiful art, man. Oh, Thank thanks so very, much. It's very inspiring. Well, thanks so much. Yes. I need to put some lights on here. My my studio's going dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're earlier than us, though, right? So you're just hitting. Uh, I am. It's about what the heck going on? Uh, uh, six fifty-two. Yeah, yeah, six fifty-two. Oh, you're you're real nice. You're here. still like early in the night. <laughs> I am. I mean, I am. I'm enjoying this California weather. Uh, hold on, I gotta turn on some lights. <clears throat> um, Kenny Calderon's covers are not in the book yet. Um, they're gonna be in the final book. But here is a sample of Kevin Stewart in the book. This is Kevin's work. That's Kevin my Stewart's favorite. Work. That's my favorite cover of the series. I love that. I love that cover. <clears throat> It's hard. Is it pixelated? It looks pixelated on mine. I'm sorry. Not really. Okay. It looks good. <clears throat> so, and Kenny's are being added shortly. It's a long story why they weren't added, because I was thinking of doing his manga work at the same time, because he did a manga version of Tragedy, and then I changed my mind, because I didn't want to leave him out of this book with his covers that he did for the Western book, so they're going to go in. Um, so, first of all... Um, Tell them how awesome it is to work with me, guys, um, how grateful you are and lucky, um, how amazing the book is, and how you've never worked with a greater publisher ever in your life, and then tell me where the money goes. Where, where's the PayPal? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I take crypto, cash, whatever you got. I mean, so what I'm trying to say is Phil is a fantastic, he's a fantastic boss. He's a wonderful man. He's a great kisser. <laughs> he is so stupid. <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs> um, so Kevin has done a couple of covers for me. Uh, it actually started out, you had done, uh, you jo joined the cover contest that I did for Tragedy 1. Um, yeah. And you won. Uh, but I put you on book two or three for that. I forget. Yeah, I think it was three. Covers. I was three. Yeah, because I had so many covers. You won, but I had to wait, and I put you on. Um, and I thought it was great. And and Kenny and I didn't know you well at the time. I mean, if I did, I probably wouldn't have bothered. But and then it was Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, Kevin it's West. Twenty there, Phil. Um, Kevin Stewart is one of those guys that we've become friends enough where I can bust his balls. Um, I mean. I'm already married. Why not? I mean, shit. <laughs> Might as well. Kenny is one of those close friends where I respect him too much to bust his balls. So I don't really respect Kevin, but you know it's okay. <laughs> that's, that's like my mantra. I mean, I mean, that's no, that's life for me. Seriously. Kevin's the guy you, you keep away from your sister, but he's your friend. And Kenny's <laughs> the guy that you allow around your sister, and he's your friend. <laughs> Kenny's non-threatening, so what he's trying to say. Um, but I don't know if you guys heard, Kevin is... Um, that is the yeah. allure, yes, the danger. Kevin West is uh, doing um, Judge Dredd, which is going to be cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. so you're officially Sweet. doing Judge Dredd? Uh, a story. I'm doing a, right. one story that's going to be in uh, that's official in 2000 to me. AD. That's official. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Well, Dude, like Judge I Dredd is earlier, like one of my favorite characters, man. I love Judge Dredd. He's so awesome. Oh my gosh, he was. Uh, he, I mentioned earlier, he was on my definitely my short list of characters. I just really hoped I would get a chance to work on some point in my career. I'm, I'm really excited. I get, I'm getting to do this thing. So, 
And how, how, how is it drawing the detail, especially, you know, his shoulder plate? <laughs> uh, you know, and there's some, some of the earlier stories they had when IDW was doing it. They were kind of going a little bit more with the look that was closer to the uh, the last movie look, whereas a yeah. little more shoulder pad and less of that giant eagle and everything yeah. like that. And I wasn't sure what they're actually doing on on 2000. So when uh, Ian Edgington is the guy who's writing this thing, and when he told me about it, he's kind of like, no, we got to go traditional dread, of course. I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulder pad, easy. <clears throat> Shoulder pad it is. Well, thank God you got that loose, that longer deadline. Yeah, that, that's it. I'm Because I'm going to be a race, a race, draw, a race, a race, draw. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, that, that thing's going to be interesting to deal with definitely. But, uh, other than that, it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's going to be all good. And there, there's, a, there's monsters in it. There's aliens in it. Yeah. And a, a guy with a dinosaur head. So you can't go, can't go wrong with that. Oh my monsters and aliens. Oh my. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That just sounds like fun all the way. It is. You can't go wrong with that kind of combo. By the way. I want to show you this is Kenny Calderon's cover. Uh, here's the here's the funny thing behind the story on this is um as you know I don't I own all the art. I don't like to sell it. It's mine. Mine, mine, mine. I'm like that guy in the Bugs Bunny cartoon. Mine, mine, you Daffy Duck when he shrunk it down. Um now Kenny drew this as a piece to just sell on the campaign to help. It wasn't meant to be anything other than just a commission piece that was sold. And I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, man, that's really good. I think I'm going to make it a cover. But I didn't feel right pulling the tear down. I thought it would be messed up to do that. So I hoped nobody bought it. And at the zero hour, somebody bought it. I'm like, son of a bitch. Wow. So <laughs> this is the only published cover that I, I don't Phil. own. Phil, what? cut you off a little bit here. You funded. Yeah. I, oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, Shazam. I've been too busy having fun talking to everybody. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, you funded. So uh, that's a, a fun. You funded in uh, uh, over two uh, hours. Why is it taking so long? There we go. Excellent. Thank you to everyone who funded us. Is, do we got to take our tops off now? <clears throat> Thank is you, everyone. No. Um, look. <laughs> All right. All right. And. Uh, Damn, you're a werewolf. No wonder why you like horror. <laughs> I've been hearing that since fourth grade. I, I was getting that I'm out of well, here. <laughs> now, here's here's the thing. First of all, and here's a color print of it, by the way. Kenny called it too. Beautiful. Beautiful work. That will be added into the book so you get to enjoy this. <clears throat> Look, I'm, I'm, i got to do my sales pitch, right? If you're a fan of art, I've had a lot of people tell me they want to buy the original pages, and I said, nope, mine, 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 mine. <laughs> and they want to buy covers. Technically, nope. Partially, yes. So this is your best way to get it. If you like IDW Artist Editions, this is my version of that. I don't put the lettering in because I wanted to honor art. So I left the letters out. So you can enjoy the sequentials as they were, as they were turned in prior to colors. It is 190 plus pages. And it is a beautiful book. I mean, you even get double page splashes Oof. in it. And there's an afterword by me. There's a little word, a blurb by Ricardo. You got the David Mack cover in the front, right open Sweet. in there. You got Bill Sienkiewicz. You've got Chris Pichalo in there. Chance Wolf on the cover, Chris Pachalo on the back, but you've also got the the line, the pencil, Chris Pachalo in the book. So this is the next best thing. And, and when you look at the Kevin West cover, you know you see the the different inking tones. You know when he when he um inked the background because it's a direct scan. You know this isn't this is a direct scan of the of the work. Right? Mm. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. There's so many in here. I mean, there's over 40 covers and 150 pages of art, that of sequential book. art. I, I love mean, artist editions. Yeah. There's the uh, the Ian Churchill cover, which is my grail. 
I am a oh, huge awesome. Ian Churchill fan. Um, he's one of my all-time favorite artists. Does not get enough love either. And I got to meet him and interview him and talk with him. And we're, not that we're good friends, but we're friendly. <clears throat> and he's honestly just a sweetheart of a guy. And it's always nice when you meet guys like Kevin and Ian and they don't disappoint you with their personality. <laughs> <laughs> So there's the Kevin again. Kevin West, and you can see it out. It's I love yeah, that. It just gives you that feel of it's it's yeah. real, it's traditional. Mm -hmm. Is that traditional? Do you, do you do all traditional or do you do digital too, Kevin? I'm a dinosaur, man. I've I had enough trouble just hooking onto this streamyard thing. <laughs> <laughs> you did fine. That that was uh that, that was trying. I think I was like I see your stuff and I, it looks so crisp. I couldn't tell. I can't tell if it's digital or if it's traditional. It's like so so dark, you know. Oof, look at that. Um, yeah, no, it's all it's all paper on board. Um, yeah, like I said, it's a good thing I'm in that you know last quarter of things. By the time everything eventually has to be done one way <laughs> or the other, then I'm I'm done. <laughs> I totally I understand mean, that, guys. It's just beautiful work. I mean, look at the that one on the left. That one on the left, though. I swear, it looks like Jim Lee did it. Like he has, he has a style that looks like Jim Lee almost. Perfect. Well, he's he's a very very tight penciler. Fortunately, some controversy surrounded him and kind of tanked his Marvel DC career. That's not for me to speak on. But as far as his art goes, it's just phenomenal work. Um, yeah, and I stuff appreciated is, him. It's good looking stuff. Just to show you, here's the original Bill Sienkiewicz. If you're not aware, if you want an original Bill Sienkiewicz, you're paying like 10 grand. <clears throat> okay? If you wanted a published piece by Bill Sienkiewicz, it's going to be 20 grand or more. Damn. Now, is my character big? No. But this is a published rare piece by Bill Sienkiewicz. It's going for five grand. That's it. I was going to say, you undercut yourself because I was just looking through the Kickstarter. And I saw that you put it at five thousand. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's, somebody's out there getting is going to get a deal. And just think, if tragedy were to ever blow up, and it's possible, you don't know. Hindsight can be a bitch. Yeah. If tragedy blows up and Philbo blows up, that person's going to have a twenty to thirty thousand dollar cover on their hands. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't blow up, you still have an original Bill Sinkevich, and how many people can say that? I'm just saying. Sure. We've got this piece by an, a Russian artist, Arseny. It's inked by Scott Hanna, the great Scott Hanna. <clears throat> We've got Al Garza, who you know from uh, Image Comics and DC. Now, I, they're taped together. I don't want to I'll tell you, but he has the, the inked piece and then the gray toned piece. Nice. The original cover, you get both for the, I think it's 800 on the on the campaign. I mean, that's it's a steal. You've got Ryan Kincaid. These are published covers, guys, by well-known oh. artists. And then if you like Marat Michaels and Do You Poo and the stuff he does with Do You Poo, I have the connecting covers that he drew. Wow. That's cool. So you and bought these, these from? You're damn right I did. I own everything. <laughs> what did you not understand? <laughs> That's why I'm broke and my wife is ready to leave me. <laughs> um, <laughs> partnerships. You never know how those works. Yeah. <laughs> no, Marat's a great guy. And uh, yeah, he was happy to sell it to me. And because uh, I just thought it was, it was, you know, it's like it's starting on half chapter half, two yeah. of a book. You need to have them both. Yeah. Um, I agree. So if you like Do You Poo and you like Tragedy, and it's a rare cover because we only did 25 of those issues, they were limited, Phoenix yeah. Fusion limited edition. So it's even more rare than that. This um, is also for sale. This is from issue one. Wow. <clears throat> um, Brian Silverbacks. This oh. piece is for sale. And there's actually the prelim on the back. That's cool. I didn't realize you got one done by Brian, too. Yeah. Uh, this is fully painted by An Vu. This is 11 by 14. I'm fully painted. Amazing. Look at that. Look how beautiful that art is. I know. I didn't want to get rid of it, but this one's a big seller. Gus Mock. This was for issue five. 
Um, people love that cover. Yeah, it's a strong cover. <clears throat> Beautiful. Now, there are covers that are even more affordable, guys. And it's nothing against the artist whatsoever, but, you know, we're going by the, the market demand. Market okay, value, that's yeah. really what it yeah, is. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, cause I love this cover to be honest with you, but this is Javier Lugo. And because half of it is inked out, I couldn't price it too high, you know? Mm. Um, but I love this with breath of the dragon unmasked. It's the very only, the only cover where breath of the dragon is un unmasked. That's a cool composition too. I like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Um, this is another one I really loved. Uh, Peter. <clears throat> oh my God. Why am I losing? Cause I don't sleep. Clinton. <laughs> Peter Clinton. Um, now, Rob Liefeld had done Snake Eyes, and Peter and I liked a cover that Rob did, and we kind of, and Peter wanted to go with it. Uh, not so much an homage because it's not a, a direct copy, but we kind of went with the same theme. Right. Um, and I love this piece. I think it's a very underrated cover. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to sell this one either, but I have to sell something. Um, and that's for sale. And again, it's very affordable. If you can't afford a five thousand dollar bill Sienkiewicz, I understand. But there's hundred and fifty dollar, three hundred dollar covers, you know. And this all goes to a good cause. I pack everything well. I I'm no longer, but I was an art rep and art dealer for a couple of years, several years. You will everything will be packaged sweetly and nicely, and safely, and insured. I will not. Send your stuff half ass like some of these people do. Here's a question for you, Phil. Um, <clears throat> that that book is is um epic. Uh, what what is the 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 shipping cost on that? I'm eating some of the shipping in the price of the book because I, I I don't want you to look. I'm gonna be honest with you. These books do not come cheap. I'm selling it for a hundred dollars. Where IDW would sell for one twenty five or one fifty because they're they're a bigger company. Right. But between shipping from overseas, the print cost on the book, um, and then you know I have to charge shipping to send it out. It's expensive. I'm not making much on each book, and that's why I'm kind of hoping to sell the original art right. to go towards Papa. But. <clears throat> Um, overseas is, is absurd with shipping these days. And this book is heavy. Yeah. I mean, if someone to break in your Even house, you're holding it. Yeah. 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 If someone to break into your house, you just have to club them with the book and they're dead. That's what I'm saying. It's a weapon. It's a book art. Come on, <laughs> folks. Why don't you want to buy it? Yeah. And look, I'm going to flex a little bit. Who the hell do you know other than IDW? Never mind a small little nobody like me that makes a freaking book like this. Beautiful. Who do you know? Nobody. That's I would think of would be uh, like a IDW or yeah, IDW. Yeah. Look how thick this book is, guys. It's it's almost two fingers thick. No joke. It's a thick boy. And yeah, and I mean, just the front and back alone, you're getting two beautiful colored covers, and then it's over. A, it's like a, with the added pages we're gonna put in. I think it's gonna be 194 to 196. <clears throat> That's not a small book, dude. Look at the thickness of this book. That's, I mean, that's, that's a big. As I was saying earlier, book. that looks like one of those classic um, books from <clears throat> the 80s and 90s that you would just go to the comic store, plunk a bunk of change on it, and, and, and um, you know, get these things. It, it doesn't, I don't feel like they do these anymore. I, I know you're saying IDW, but I, I haven't seen a book, you know, that art right. book in a while. Well, th well, think about it. And thank you for bringing that up, Rafael. Think about this. You see what art goes for today, right? NFTs, I don't care what anybody says. That was just to raise the original art prices. That's my opinion. Fight me if you want. But uh, <laughs> original art prices are through the roof. If you want to just get an original piece, you're spending three, four, five, six, seven hundred, a thousand, two thousand, four thousand, especially the big names I have in this book, right? <clears throat> who can afford that for a hundred dollars you get a whole gallery of beautiful covers that you would never that you you know for a hundred bucks that's not even a sketch cover at this point no a freaking yeah. sketch cover is 160 dollars 150 dollars this whole book is only a hundred bucks i mean 
I don't know what else I can do to to keep the cost down at my expense and 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 make it worth your value. But <clears throat> that's you know I'm doing what I can. Now it's your turn. You know I I need you guys to come out. And we we've had someone who was just very kind and donated some money. And I'm very grateful to you. Thank you for that that person. Um, I would prefer to give you something for, for your dollar, but you can donate on Kickstarters if you'd like to. I just yeah, think no, why not we'll, we'll come away that, with yeah. something. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people all the time um, when doing Kickstarters on the <clears> show <throat> that you you know you don't you know if if you have a, a couple of bucks you know just throw it onto the project. You know sometimes that helps out projects, and and it, and it gets more people. The more people are interested in this project, the better it is for the project, the better it is in the algorithm, the better it is. Folks, you know, there's other ways to help other than buying the book, but at the same time, look how look at this massive thing. You know you want this. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here's the thing. I do know of a good nine or ten people that they say they absolutely want this book. They just, you know, are, not everybody's at launch. You know, they're not here right now. Um, but I, I'm very sincere when I say I really need people to, to support. It's really for a good reason. And, um, I just hope that they do. I know that booby covers make a lot of money on campaigns and I'm not knocking you. If you like booby covers and those people make booby covers, you've met your demographic, you're giving what people want. Cool, good business on you. I do think though, if you if you could in your heart afford to an eighty dollar booby cover, maybe you could throw five dollars at this campaign or ten dollars or just buy the PDF of the trade payback for twenty bucks. Um, I'm not telling you how to spend your money. I'm not judging you on how you spend your money. But if you could share some, you know, help others out as well, that would be great. I've been told a million times if I just popped out tragedies boobs, I'd have thirty thousand dollar campaigns. And the truth is, yeah. I would, but I won't do it. I don't want to do it because I, I don't. That's just not me. It's not my message for for women's strength. I have two little girls, and I want. I want them to live in a world where they understand that their their strength and their power is not in their sex appeal, but in their mind and their heart. I'm not judging you when I say that. I'm just telling you this is how I feel. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm not saying I'm not making any political, social, political commentary. I'm just explaining why I don't do that with my books. Comics should be for reading. Hustler is where you go for that stuff, in my opinion. But hey, if you can make money, have a, have at it. If that's what you want, have at it. But if you could support a good cause, or if you're a big art lover, again, this campaign also has the Tragedy Trade Payback and Philbo Publishing Presents, where you can get Tragedy 1, Withered 1, and Dynamics 1 in one collective volume. So you can just buy comics, too. <clears throat> um I won't show you the trailer because I've put the video. I mean, I've showed you the book a hundred times, but this is it. I show some pictures. These are actual pictures of the actual book done by the printing company that I had to approve before they shipped out the proof. So this is the actual book. It's not fabricated pictures, just so you know. <clears throat> a little, you know, a little write up about it. Your reward is the book. Add-ons for thirty-five dollars, you get two hundred twenty-four page. Tragedy trade paperback with choice would be the Chris Pachalo, Bill Sinkevich, and David Mack covers. And Philbo Publishing Presents is the collected volume of three issues. Tragedy number one, Dynamics number one, and Withered number one. So you can do a little sample size of what Philbo Publishing's comics are all about. And it's only 15 bucks, $5 per issue. Staying competitive with the LCS stores. I'm not trying to rip you guys off. I'm just trying to raise money the right way, you know, by by not asking for donations, but asking you to to buy product. There's the Mike DeBalfo cover. <clears throat> There's the Ryan Kincaid, the Al Garza, which you get two covers, actually, the one with the gray tones as well as just the inked. 
There's the big one, Bill Sienkiewicz. Someone, now, <clears throat> Bill was very kind. I, I saw him at New York Con, and he was going to give me the cover. And I didn't know he did a prelim for it. And he handed me the prelim, and he says, here, man, here's a prelim. Enjoy it. And I was in need of money, so I sold the prelim. And it sold for 2500 and that's a prelim. Wow. So when, when, I tell you, when I tell you that 5000 for a published Bill Sienkiewicz cover, I understand it may be above some people's pay grades. I get that. But if you're an art collector, you know it's a steal. I could be asking for more. It's a steal. I mean, <clears throat> that's all I'm going to say. There's the Scott Hanna inked over Arseni. I always forget his last name. I apologize. Oh, first name. Kolyasnikov Arseni. Great Russian artist you can find on Instagram. The Marat Michaels, do you poo crossover cover? I'm sorry, but it's selling as a set. I am not selling them individually. Uh, it would just be foolish to do that. <clears throat> Gus Mark. On Vu. There's a reason why I don't name this person. It's because I repped them and they stole from me, so I'm <laughs> not going to give them credit. Javier Lugo. <clears throat> yeah, he can kiss my ass, and that's why I'm selling the art. <laughs> I liked the art, but now that I can't stand his ass, I'm getting rid of the art. And it'll go to a good cause. So his stealing from me hopefully can turn into a good thing for my father. Okay, then we got the Brian Silverbacks. Peter Clinton. And then we've got samples of the interior so you can see what's in the book, guys. I mean, <clears throat> Ricardo is a very, very detailed artist. He's got that 90s style. You know, look, he's a beautiful artist. He's, he's, he's very talented. Um, I love this panel. It's a great panel. Yeah, it's a good panel. And, um, <clears throat> and I appreciate him. And everything he's done for this book. And I also wanted to spotlight him and give him a little love for all the work he's done. I mean, I love this. Amazing and I'm going to give my wife. And he just keeps getting better and better. When you look at him uh, and what he's doing in issue eight right now, you're going to say, wow, he's just really getting better and better. This panel, my wife actually did the art direction and came up with having the guy falling out of the panel out like this. And, uh, great job. And I, I, I want to give my wife a lot of love because throughout this entire um, live stream, she has been providing me with tea and lozenges and stuff to keep my voice going. And she just comes in and puts it down. And she's a very humble woman, as gorgeous as she is. She doesn't like to be on the camera. She just puts it down and walks away. And um you know, my, my wife loves my dad very much. He's he's become a father to her. And um, she's hit hard by this, too. And she's just staying strong for me. And she's been just a blessing and a godsend. And it's another reason why I don't like to sexualize tragedy, because there's an old saying that for every good man, uh, behind every good man is a good woman. And I, I actually think... For every good man is a good woman propping him up. Yeah. You know, I, I think we want to become better men because of them. The children they give us, the dedication and devotion they give us for the rest of our lives. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I would have nothing if not for my wife. And tragedy is actually a little bit of her in there, the character. Because women, I don't think, are written well these days. They're written like they're perfect, like they're infallible. They have no no room for error, no hero's journey. They get everything right. And I think that's an insult because women go through shit that we will never go through physically, emotionally, <clears throat> mentally, and their strength is not that it all comes easy at all. It's that it comes difficult with difficulty, and they still get up, and they're still moms, and they're still wives, and they're still workers, and they're still friends. And they're still supporters, and they're still, you know, people doing careers. And um, 
there's no greater honor I can pay my wife than doing the character service. So if that matters to you, great. If it doesn't, cool. I'm just telling you how I feel. I, that's it. And again, you look at the action pages. There's just a lot going. This I'm proud of. I, I in my scripts I will write some panels very detailed how I want them to look. I'm a big fan, Kevin. You, I'm sure you're aware. Growing up, you know, being an artist in the '90s as well, I love the ghost movements to show movement. I find that to be a lot of fun. And, oh yeah. And I wanted him to do the backflip, spring off this guy, and use his chest to go forward. Um, so sometimes I write loose for the artist, and sometimes to give them – I think artists should have creative freedom. Otherwise, you won't get the best out of them. I don't like to be micromanaging you at all. You're the artist. I'm not. Let you do your magic, you know. But <clears throat> sometimes I do come up with ideas that I like, and I will put into the into the script. Oh, sure, sure. Like, this is going to be a double-page splash in the book. It's not, an you know, it's going to be two pages at 11 by 17. It's going to be big. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's going to be 22 by 17. That's a nice big page. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's just, Ricardo has been, I couldn't do this without him. And there was, I'm not going to lie, I pay on time, but there were a few times that shit hit the fan and I didn't have the money that week and he waited a week. Now, I don't wait months if I don't have to, you know, things like that, but he was patient with me. He trusted me. Kenny trusts me. Kevin trusts me. They, they, they know that I'll do right by them and they've been very supportive. If it wasn't for Kenny Calderon and, and, and Nutcase, um, Kevin, um, <clears throat> <laughs> I, I couldn't get a lot done. You know, Kevin Stewart is also responsible for the trade dress on Diary of Dread. I told him I wanted the old EC Comics homage, and he came up with that logo and that that trade dress. So that's all on him. It looks um, fantastic too. It nails it. It absolutely nails that time. And that's what we wanted to pay tribute. I respect and love. Look, I I had a very rough and violent childhood. Uh, where I didn't feel safe in my own home. It was hard. And comics were my escape. Comics taught me my morality. They taught me what was right and what was wrong. They they kept me from feeling alone. Um, and they told me that I can stay strong no matter how hard it gets. And me doing comics today is a dream come true because it's it's me giving thanks and paying tribute to a medium that, as silly as it sounds, uh, saved me, you know, and and guys like Kevin West who were drawing comics in the 90s that I would go run to the store and get, you're all part of that. You know, you were in my house on those days that I grabbed those books and I got to hole up in my room and hide from the world and just in a healthy way get away from it all. I never went to drugs, never went to alcohol, I never went to cigarettes, I never went to any of that because I had comics. And what you guys do, all of you, is a wonderful thing that you can bring into people's homes every day. And um, and that's why when you hear me complain about the seedy things in the industry, you may get mad at me, but I take offense because you're fucking up what I love. And you're fucking up what's good in this world. So get your shit straight. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> Here's another. Now, I want to give a shout out to Geraldo Borges as well because he actually assisted because Ricardo had some deadlines and times were tight. Geraldo did some uh, roughs for us in this fight scene <clears throat> um, that to help Ricardo time-wise. So Geraldo did the roughs and Ricardo did the rendering on this one specific fight scene. So thank you to Geraldo. <clears throat> oh, yeah, great job. And then, of course, and then you got the covers. I mean, let me tell you a little quick story about Ian Churchill. Ian Churchill, as you know, worked on X-Men and Supergirl and Teen Titans, and he did his own book, Marine Man, and he's a well-known artist. He's well-established. 
<clears throat> and he's one of the few that could do a cartoony style and a 90s type pencil and nail both of them. Okay. I went to Ian. I didn't know. I knew, like we. He knew me, but he didn't know me. And I reached out to him and asked for a cover. <clears throat> and he said, you know, what are you looking for? And all I said to him was, well, how about we have tragedy looking at her former life in the mirror? And it was a very simplistic idea, right? Minimalist. And Ian continued every day to ask me questions about the character. I mean, really invested in the character so he could nail the cover. Now, this is a big name in the industry. I'm some little schmuck with my book one. And he treated me with the same respect he would have Marvel or DC. Yeah, just like Kevin went. yeah, just like you do. <clears throat> and after a few days of asking me important questions, even down to which way the Shuriken should face on her chest, on her on her vest, he goes, okay, it's done. Let me know what you think. And this is what the man handed to me. We did not talk about dead bodies. We did not talk about detailed mirrors or walls. He, I asked him for this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he gave me a thousand times more than I asked for. Did not ask for more money, nothing. And then he, uh, he signed it on the border because he didn't want, he thought I wouldn't want him to ruin the art with his signature. Are you freaking kidding me? That, I mean, that is interesting. <laughs> humble. Well, obviously, we digitally moved his signature onto the onto the cover, but look what he turned out. And to this day, it is everybody's most. It's the most popular cover. It embodies her story. Yeah. It tells a story. She looks so freaking badass. And I just, <clears throat> I don't know what to say when when. When this happens, you know, two of the best renditions of tragedy, three of the best renditions of tragedy are Kevin West's cover, this one, and Chance Wolf. Um, they just, they're her, you know? And uh, and Sean did Breath of the Dragon like nobody's business. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you get all this in this book. I mean, look at this Jose Luis cover. This is insane with John Livesay inks. Yeah, I mean, look, he is. She is fantastic too. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why he has. I guess it's because he's overseas. I don't know why he hasn't blown up more. I mean, he's done a lot of DC work. He's now on Marvel. Look at the line work, and then John Lucey, of course, is amazing, amazing inker. Look at this. Wow. And and not there's not a spot on this cover that he didn't draw on. I mean, really giving you your money's worth. Really treating me like you know a respectable, excuse me, a respectable publisher in the industry, and that means a lot to me. Especially because a lot of artists don't like drawing all that stuff anymore. I avoid it if I can. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't with me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't see any castles in there, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just there's Tyler Kirkham that's in the book. Will Spritasio that's in the book. There's Sean. I mean, Brother Dragon, look at that pose. It's just wow. Oh. And of course, Kevin's. Look at the line work and the detail. I mean, just look at what he does with the inking on her shoulder plate alone. And it's not just light reflection, it's it's wear and tear. Look at the folding and the clothing. You know? Wow. Um the, the 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 outline of the elbow. I mean he's a pro. Look at the clothing folding and and a lot of artists Yeah, a lot of artists um tend to do their interpretation of tragedy. And I'm, I'm kind of easy, so I don't say anything. I'll let it go. But Kevin, <clears throat> Ian, they they got her exactly what she's supposed to look like. I mean, they're the exemplary image I send to people when they need references. 
And then look at the breath of the dragon. I mean, how badass does he look? And then when you put him in the, the half silhouette there, oh. And just look at the detail on the mask, the, the features. It's just amazing. And, of course, it was colored by the great Chris Sotomayor, 30-year veteran in the comics industry. And then there's Larry, who was on earlier. <clears throat> Again, I love Larry's style. And I love that you always know it's a Larry Stroman when you see it. No one, no one has his style. And, and I love that. You, he's maintained his look completely yeah. all these years. There's, there's never been a digression at all. I agree. I agree. And he's just, he's just unique and he's fantastic. And I love his... <clears throat> Her hair is red and it looks like fire. Yeah. And it's, color. yeah. it's just so, it, it just fantastic. Here's a funny tidbit. I asked him, what are these things coming at her? Are they like gun barrels or whatever? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, Mal is right, a no, The city isn't this, this straight line thing. There's all these things sticking out of <clears throat> all over the place. Like jagged he, teeth on a countryside. Exactly. Yeah, and you know what? He uses a slight Dutch tilt to make you look a little uneasy looking at this because obviously she's hiding, you know, this, and she's ready to attack. There's, you know, <clears throat> there's wear and tear in the wall here. So he uses a tilt to kind of make you a little uneasy with the cover, you know what I mean, as a, as, a, as the, the viewer. Gives you <clears throat> a subconscious sense she's going to fall off. Yeah. Yeah. It's just awesome stuff. And then there's me 60 pounds ago. I had uh, quite a few chins. There's Ricardo. There's the vulture. <clears throat> I call Jason Meadows the vulture. But uh, he formatted the book, and he's my letterer, and he's – he's. I Jason know if, if he ever has cosplayed the vulture because I, I can see it. No, no. He looks like, he looks like a Dr. Venture. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, Doctor Vesper! <laughs> oh <Whoa>. shit! <laughs> That's rusty. And you wow. know, uh, Jason is a pro, man. He's reliable and on time. And no matter what he's got going on, if he says it's gonna be done, it's done. I've relied so heavily on him for so much, and I can't thank him enough for what he does. He went through, through some serious shit too. His barn went on fire, and he lost it. His car, everything. And this man is still turning in work. I told him, look, take your time. Nope, he gets it done. And there's Ke uh, Kenny Calderon's cover to Papa. Um, and even if it's not in time, I'm still going to look to do this book uh, as soon as I can. My dad is a Vietnam veteran. Um, he had probably the worst childhood I've ever heard of in my life <clears throat> and the funny thing is you know you grow up and you don't know the sacrifices parents are making in the background and yeah. i'm not taking away from mothers right now but i'm speaking about fathers right now <clears throat> fathers often suffer in silence we worry about making money and being providers being good fathers, being good husbands. We feel like we're failing our families all the time. We want to be there to pick up the toy phone for our children, even when we're exhausted after a day of work that we hate. And we try to be the men that they deserve. And we make sacrifices that people don't see. And we don't get credit for it. And we don't ask for credit for it. We don't put up posts. We don't seek attention. We just do it. We do it because our legacy is the father that we were. And, you know, my father made a share of mistakes. And as a kid, you don't see past the mistakes. But when you get older and you become a father yourself and you, you start to understand things and you start to, to see him more for who he is as a person rather than this father that's supposed to be infallible because none of us are. Kevin's a father, Kenny's a father, Kevin's a father, Ralph's a father. And we make our share of mistakes, <clears throat> but we try to be the fathers they need, the husbands they need. And this book explores 
the relationship between an estranged son and father. It does. And it goes into the sacrifices a father will make that go unnoticed, that you don't even realize he's making, and he's suffering in silence. But there is a twist that I cannot divulge that nobody sees coming. No. <laughs> this is not just a family drama book. It's a comic book. It's not a novel for a reason. This is a hero's tale. I've been told it is written like a Silver Age book with heart and compassion and story and family, and it's emotionally powerful. But at the same time, it's going to provide you the hero that you like to see in comics. And that's really all I can say about it right now. But I can't get this book made without your help. DM Ray actually did a review on it. <clears throat> Pop review of the script. Looking forward to the final product. This is the link to the review. Thank you, DM Ray. Uh, and a great twist. Uh, <clears throat> the reason why I had to be graphic novel and not single issues is the first issue is really setting you up. Um, it sets the characters up, who they are, etc. But it's a lot of exposition dump. And in the comic, I fear people won't come back for an issue two if, you know what I mean, if I just put out one as it is because I feel it's developing. Because right, that's how it is now. Because back <clears> then, <throat> we, we would have dealt with the expedition dump and come back for the next year. <laughs> right. But people don't have the attention span no. anymore, and I'm in competition with so much media mm -hmm. that it's interesting ex exposition. Don't get me wrong. You're really getting into the aspects of the characters. Yeah. But people are impatient, and 22 pages of, of that might make some people say, it was good, but I don't need to see what happens. <clears throat> Although the end of that first chapter kind of wallops you. So it had to be a graphic novel. And if I'm going to pay artists fair wages, it's 15 grand. If somebody buys this original art, even the Bill Sienkiewicz, that's a third of my cost gone. I was going to say, half the art there, if they bought like three or four pieces, you're done. And I'm praying that they do as much as I don't want to sell it. And <clears throat> six month, five, six months ago, my father was bench pressing 165 pounds a day. He's a fucking beast. He's the scariest man you're ever going to meet. As a matter of fact, you know the character Tony in Tragedy? He's my real-life friend since 11 years old. He's huge. He is big. He's afraid of my father. <laughs> my father is a bad mamma jamma. I'm just telling you right now, he always was. He was tough. He... Let's just say... <clears throat> I'm not exaggerating when I tell you how tough my father is. It's not just tough love. It's not just the beating. It's not he didn't give a shit who you were. He would go fight 100 ninjas if he had to. He doesn't care. <clears throat> my father was just nuts, and he's tough. But in the last five months, he has severely declined that we went up to see him last Sunday. He's lost 30 pounds overnight wow. and he's not breathing well and he's got other ailments and he gets mad if i say this he's not on facebook but his wife is and <clears throat> he gets mad he doesn't want me using him as the reason people buy the book but he is the reason why i need help for papa i'm just being honest i'm not guilting anybody you're not a bad person if you don't back papa i'm just telling you where the money's going <clears throat> and <clears throat> I got sick. He was he was rushed to the ER today. Um, I'm getting updates once in a while. And to be honest with you, I I don't I don't know how much time we have with him. And uh, I kind of feel cheated because uh, I just started having a relationship with him in the last two to three years, and I would love for him to see Papa in his hands. Because it was my way of telling him it's okay. The mistakes you made are okay. You know, I forgive you. I love you. 
And I just want him to, to be happy and live out the rest of his years well. But it is what it is. You know, it's in God's hands. If you don't believe in God, cool, but I do. <laughs> um, and uh, that's what this is about. So if you could donate, look, even if you just donate, uh, if you want, give me your address. I'll send you a, a free PDF or, or something or, you know, I'll give you something for your dollar because I don't want to hand out. And I know people work hard for their money. You work very hard for your money and you probably work hard at a job that you have no fulfillment with and you hate. So asking you to spend your money on my stuff, I understand, you know, that the honor I feel when you do that, it, believe me, I, I mean it. There are people in this industry that have gotten so used to people throwing money at them, I think they don't appreciate it anymore. Trust me, I every dime, every kindness. Larry Stroman is offering me a piece of art to sell to keep full proceeds to go towards Papa. Um, there's a guy, Mike Wheeler, online. You know, he's very controversial. A lot of people think he's a bad guy. They get mad at him, blah, blah, blah. This man, he does $30,000 campaigns, and he's offering 5% of his campaign towards Papa. And there are people rallying around me that I'm very grateful for. I really am. <clears throat> um, so I don't care if you put a dollar in. I don't care if, you, you know, uh, your dollar is as valuable to me as anything else because you don't have to do it. And for guys like Kevin who were willing to work with me and Kenny – and, and Kevin Stewart or Raphael just helping co-host today. I, I, it really does mean a lot to me, I swear to you, because sometimes we forget the human aspect of things and we get caught up in making money and making our dreams come true. And sometimes we just got to go back to basics and remember that we're all facing something. I'm not the only one losing someone to cancer. I'm not the only one who's struggling to try to make a respectable business that people take seriously and makes money. You know, I'm not the only one who has his days where he feels on top of the world and then days where he feels like life just kicked his freaking teeth out of his mouth and I, I want to quit. We all feel that. And that's why I write about that stuff. And that's why I don't want to do an SFW. I want to write about the stuff that really matters to us, you know, that we can all relate to, you know. So I'm sorry I've gone on this ramble, just being honest. It's what I always do. Like me or hate me. Yeah, at least know where I stand. But um, I also want to say that um, Kevin West is a professional of 30 years, so he doesn't need this endorsement. But Kevin is a great human being. He is a, a phenomenal artist. Thank you. Go support Judge Dredd when it comes out and make them know that he needs to be on another Judge Dredd story after that one's done. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and support everything he does. And when it comes to Kenny Calderon, um, Kenny gave me the best work of his career, in my opinion, on the manga. And I know that he will continue to give me his best work going forward. And he's been very patient with me and very kind with me. And he's been a friend and a supporter and an investor, um, not just an artist. And Kevin Stewart, the same things. The guy is, 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 has sacrificed for me, and he's, he's bled for me, just like Kenny. And he's gone out of his way for me. And he's always been fair to me, more than fair. And whether I, I – you know – the only reason why I'd want to make it really big is so that I could pay it forward to all of you for everything you do for me. Um, because I really, really sincerely appreciate it. This isn't, this isn't bullshit. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't tell my wife who's got my back and who's been in my corner and who I couldn't do this without. And you, you guys are all part of that. And I hope that I make it worth your while someday that you're part of this. I really do. But anyway, enough with all this sappy shit. Um, <laughs> you guys are awesome. We are at five hundred and eleven dollars. We have funded. Oh, we just went to five twenty-one. Nice. Um, I am sincerely grateful to everybody that has made this 
fund. And um, yeah, just thank you. Uh, for everybody that makes Philbo Publishing matter that I can do this and enjoy doing this. Um, I love you. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> um, I didn't give Kevin and Kenny a lot of time. So let me give you some time. Um, Kevin, you're obviously welcome to stick around. I just feel bad that, you know, um, you're sitting here listening to me blather for freaking 25 minutes. <laughs> um, Kevin, tell us what you're up to, what you're doing, where you're going, what we, where we could find you, why we want to spend our money on you besides your drug habit. <laughs> which which Kevin is this? Uh, You'll be glad to well, you know I've given up the drugs and now I'm not yeah. the alcohol diet. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen my drug habit just yet. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, me and my pal Jim Beam, we just hang out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin um, Stewart, go ahead and tell us. Okay, uh, okay. If you, if, you, if you have to go, Kevin, then go ahead and give your, give your shout out before you have to go. If Unless you're sticking around, but um, no, I actually I should. I do need to get cruising yeah. here. Um, this um, this book is going to be fabulous. You got going on here. I love the fact that it's all black and white and whatnot, so you really get to see all the the art. You know, as it's turned in originally. I mean, everyone sees the final published stuff at the end, and uh, oh my gosh, I just I love when you can actually see this stuff in black and white. Because, like, when Marvel started doing the essentials and whatnot, you're actually seeing, like, just the black and white work. And you're seeing the inks and you're seeing, the you know, the whole thing before it before it got colored. And it's just a whole different way of looking at it. So I'm, I'm really excited that you got that going on with this book. And um, it, it's, a, it's a great thing for all the fans to see, really. Thank you. And, uh, guys, uh, plug, again, tell us. You know about Dre. Tell us everything you're doing. What we can look for you if if you're looking to take on commissions, anything. Please just go ahead. Uh, well, at the moment, I'm I'm working on a uh, Judge Dredd story. It's um it's going to be in two parts. Um, you know, yes, me earlier when it was going to come out, and I I think it's supposed to be in the July August issues. I'm there. Um, and like I say, I got to have the first one done by the beginning of May. So that, that would give him enough time to do July. Right. I would think <laughs> it gives him enough, and it's all, it gives him enough time to color it and get the thing in there. So yeah, actually now that I think about it, I think that's when it was supposed to be, uh, July and August. Um, it's the first time I've done anything for, uh, 2000 AD. I'm just, you know, really excited about it. Cause it's one of those characters I always wanted to work on. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun story. And it's like, you know, it's got some aliens in it and it's got monsters in it and, you know, a parallel dimension cop with a dinosaur head. <laughs> what else do you need? That is true. <laughs> and, I've, and, you know, I don't know who's aware of what, but go look at your comic collection. You'd be surprised how many of your books that you have in your collection. Kevin is on Marvel, DC, Malibu, you name it. Um, you might be surprised that, wow. And uh, Kevin is one of those artists I think has evolved and just gotten even better over time, as great as he was then. He just keeps getting better. And those are the guys that you really respect and appreciate. So go check out Judge Dredd when it comes out. Tell your your comic shop you want that book. And then tell 2000 AD you want Kevin back on that book. <clears throat> um and check out Kevin's cover for Phil Bo on Arcane Syndicate and pick up this hardcover book because he's in it. Yeah. Kevin, thanks for spending so much time with us. I'm sorry if it was a lot of it was sitting around, but I would oh, love no, to have no, you no, on and you. talk about you. No, no, thank you. Thank you. That, that's that's very kind of you, really. Everything you guys had to say, very nice. Well, you are awesome, and I look forward to seeing your next post because you just keep posting amazing art, whether it's commissions or – birthday tributes to characters or first appearances <laughs> or yeah. or your horror stuff or just guys if you're not following kevin west page and you love art you need to go That's check true. it out if you want to see horror stuff just scroll back to october <laughs> there you go kevin thank you I really appreciate thank being you part of everything it's great meeting you guys have a great night take care now take care bud so I do apologize, guys. You've been really patient. I appreciate you. 
Uh, we'll start with Kevin Stewart. <clears throat> um, first of all, the, the composition of the cover that is in the book. It's not your first cover with Tragedy, but it is um, it is our, uh, our, both of our favorites, you and I. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put it up. What made you come up with the composition, and uh, what were your thoughts doing it? I mean... Well, I try to... I try to get inspiration from from classic covers or covers that I feel make an impact. And the way I see tragedy, it's a very, um, very a very strong character that fits in like the Daredevil realm for me. Very street vigilante, dark, kind of you know Punisher esque world. So I kind of got the idea. I'm not gonna lie. I got the idea from a Punisher cover where he's I think he's shooting or stabbing Daredevil through the through the stomach. I don't know who I don't know who the original artist was, but that's where I got the original idea to pull this composition in. And I wanted it to make where she actually gets the upper hand at least because she's always getting her her, her rear end kicked through this series. Yeah. Yep. I thought let's give her let's give her some little come up it's for uh for once. And I wanted it to be in like a dirty, dingy Chinatown type type location too. So which was cool. And that's your other cover. You did three covers, but I put two of them in there. I need to have content for the next book. Um, <laughs> and this was great. Uh, if you look closely, you see the Breath of the Dragon skeletal hand reaching out of the skulls, which is a great ad. And her, oh, it's just great. And her, her mask is laying there among the skulls. <clears throat> um, this was a fantastic cover by Kevin as well. What made you come up with that composition? Well, I kind of I wish I had a big grandiose you know grandiose story for this, but I really I just kind of thought of death for her and like her her past coming to get her, like she can't escape her her fate almost in a situation like that. Nice. So she's surrounded by all the bodies that she's she's created, and the one that just she can't get away from is is bringing her down into it. That's really the only place I can go with it. I didn't really have any inspiration other than just I wanted to. Put her in a in a dark situation for her layout. And, and you have a horror background, so it's just right yeah. up your alley. Um, I do have to say though, the the composition on both are great, but I don't know if people know art uh, well enough to know that the composition on the grave, the angle that you're coming at, is not an easy angle to draw at. So you did a wonderful job on that, inks included. <clears throat> I love those two covers. Uh, you may ask why Kevin's in the book because of the death threats on my family. Um, <laughs> no, because they're they're be honest with you, they sold really well. They're covers that I really like. I thought that they <clears throat> they told a story, um, and they deserve to be in there. Now there are other covers that deserve to be in there, but again, I need content for another book someday. So I couldn't throw. I have seventy covers for crying out loud or so. So. Someone had to make the, the, you know, someone didn't make the cut, and not because you don't deserve it. But at the same time, they can always get the other book that has all the covers in it. Yep. There's no first I mean, or second place here. It's just, it's just so much content. You got to get on the train and just take exactly. it right around. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. And besides, you've been such a huge part of what we're doing here with tragedy that you just earned a place in the book anyway, even if the art was shit, which it's not. <laughs> I was waiting for a spit take. Yeah. <laughs> he almost got me. Good thing his thing was like five pounds. I was trying to wait until you drank. Um, before we, we go over to Kenny, too, and we're going to come back to, to Kevin, uh, I wanted to let everybody know, <clears throat> you may not all know why I'm called Philbo Publishing, but it's basically based on my nickname for my wife. My wife did a cover, a limited edition wraparound cover, these are the raw pencils she did. I put it in there. <clears throat> My wife is a very talented artist that never gets to draw because she works hard, takes care of my family, takes care of me. What's she charging um, for that cover? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great because I get to sleep with the artist. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> so you did have to pay her. <laughs> hey, if you got to pay somebody. <laughs> Hey, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, right? <laughs> that was the best three minutes of her life. But anyway. Um, it's not about the time, it's about the quality. Yeah. 
Um, <coughs> sorry, my throat's getting raw. Um, for about three hours now, so <laughs> I know Peter Palmiotti inked it, but I put her pencils in just because it's my wife, you know, um, and she deserved it. <clears throat> now, Kenny Calderon did the manga for tragedy, and I'm telling you, Kenny kicked ass on this book. It is just. It is 40 pages of just fantastic manga tragedy with 10 extra pages of, of violent um, action. And Kenny interpreted the page as well. And what he added to it was even better. And I'm so proud of this manga <clears throat> that I, I wanted to put the manga in in this, but costs of the book get so expensive that I couldn't. So I was going to save all of Kenny's work to go with the manga on another edition. But then I was like, I, uh, that's kind of sucks to, to leave Kenny out on this book. I didn't like it. So I'm putting in two of Kenny's covers for the Western book, and then we'll worry about the, the, the manga stuff later on. <clears throat> Yeah, Kenny knocked it out of the park. That manga is a hard style to replicate. Oh, Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Um, but, you know, the motion he put in it, the, the style, uh, the stylizing he did of the, the panels. And, I mean, I got it right here. I could grab it and show you if you want. It's just phenomenal. Actually, I got it right here. Yeah, it's Phenomenal awesome. work. <clears throat> before we get into that, I told you the story before when we hashed it, but I just want to show you. This was one of the most dynamic covers. I mean, Brother Dragon is sending her through a wall. They're falling. Intense fight. <clears throat> the energy around this is fantastic. I kind of, the only reason why I still have this piece is because the guy is asking for it to be graded and we ran into some problems. But this is going to be mailed to Kenny. Oh, shit. Kenny, I didn't put this in your package. I got to send this to your package. Um, so he can get graded at a show for me because he's the one who's going to sign it. <clears throat> um, so fantastic work on this. Um, and this is one cover. I don't have the other cover because it was done digitally, uh, right? Oh, do I have it? Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm thinking, I, I'm no, I I've did, got the I did, I did three, uh, three, three covers, four. Well, four with the manga one, but three with the manga one, yeah, Western. and, and total is, it's been four covers. It was uh, my submission for chapter yeah, right here. one, I yes, think. here. Boom, this is going to be new, put in the book, right? That's going to be put in the book. Um, my submission for chapter one. the um, I was thinking of the, the Breath of the Dragon on the dock, that's not going to be in this book because I want to add that later with the manga. This right. one, that was the other one and that one are going to be in the book added. <clears throat> Kenny did the no, inks, of course. I think it's well. more. It's more. It's that one that you're holding. It was Breath of the Dragon on the dock, Tragedy and Breath of the Dragon going through the wall, and then the manga, the manga version of Tragedy right. and Breath of the Dragon in the background as the as the right. background image with the fire, right? And and then the 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 sword cover for right the, right um, um yeah uh, but uh, yeah that's counting the manga exactly let me show you um his mastery on the manga here now just so you know the i have an edition of this with the manga on the back mm. so what you do is you go through the book there was a printing error unfortunately on this it is what it is um we're gonna rectify when we go back but that's the cover um Kenny colored it too. Beautiful. Look at the, the ballerina slipper, the blood. Yeah. Oh, that feels like some out of a show, out of like a what's it called, Shogun? Is that the, like, yeah. the mm -hmm. Shonen Jump? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking mm -hmm. of. Like, and I'm, I'm not big on the manga, like <clears throat> all the terminology, but that, that, that it feels like a like a legit mangaka did that, you know. Well, people don't realize her her uniform is a mixture of Chinese, Japanese, and American military. Oh, she's culture appropriating. I see what this. Is. Yes, <laughs> and that's why she looks. That's why she looks different than most characters you see. I mean, look at that. Yeah, see, it's got it's got all the flavor. 
the panels, everything. I see that's something I can't do. I don't have the dynamic panel like layout. I can't. I'm very square, six nine panels. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite favorite panels right here. So I, I draw a lot of inspiration, a lot of my inspiration from some of my favorite uh, manga illustrators, right? Like Kentaro Mura. Uh, he's synonymous with Berserk. Right? Uh, Kev, like you as a horror fan, I think you would love Berserk. Oh, yeah. I've been wanting to get my hands on a horror back of that. And um, one, of, one of the things that... that uh, in particular, the Kentaro did with with Berserk, right? With uh, with guts, considering that Berserk itself is set in a medieval uh, setting, right? Berserk uh, guts is like swing. He has these epic like sword fights with other knights and monsters and such. So, you know the the way the way he would communicate. Uh, the the tactical aspect of the way guts would fence and and fight these monsters was like phenomenal to me you know and as you read through the chapters of that manga you can see visually you can see his evolution and how those fights read right so <clears throat> I, I pulled a lot of inspiration uh from berserk and uh, another uh, battle manga to uh, to do tragedy, right? Um, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I do anyway, even in American comics, uh, is there's a lot of I try to put a lot of energy into it because I've always been a fan of like seeing a lot of motion in stills, you know, uh, seeing what what Frank Miller did with Man Without Fear. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, Todd McFarlane's earlier stuff on Amazing Spider Man. Uh, you know, just it, it's. I love seeing energy being conveyed in in, in stills. So it, it's one of the things that me, uh, growing up was one of the things that kept me tethered to reading comics. It's you know being able to look at the uh, the image and and in your mind's eye see it move. Right. Yeah. When I write, that's what I do. I see it like a, a TV show or a movie. Same thing here. Uh, in front of me. <clears throat> I agree. And you know, a lot of a lot of the uh, the sequences I I like to I guess formulate them in a way where it makes sense. You know, where if where if uh, we need to get to like for example, there's a there's a uh, we've all seen and Red Tragedy Chapter One, right? So there's no spoilers here, right? So in no, the you scene can go where, ahead, yeah. <laughs> so in the scene where you know Breath of the Dragon is is fighting tragedy, right, inside her stepfather's office, right? We needed to get outside, right? We needed to a disarm her, and b get her outside so that she's forced to use a pistol. So. The, the, my OCD when when it comes to doing comics, right? I, it all needed to make sense, and it all needed to fit like neatly in what Phil wrote. So I had tragedy be like lose one sword inside the office. In the stun of losing that sword, Breath of the Dragon grabs her by by her her uh, vest and throws her through the window. Right, um, and then before she can react, I think no wait, no, she loses both swords in the office. She loses both swords in the office, and then um, she reaches for the pistols when they get outside. So immediately, as she manages to get her bearings after taking the tumble through the window, breast of the dragon immediately jumps out, right, and and confronts her. So when she tries to reach for the pistols, you know he. You know, with one sword swipe, you know, knocks them both out of her hands before she's able to even cock them. So, you know, it's 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 those small transitions in in an action sequence, right? That not only keep you engaged because the majority of that there was no dialogue. 
So it's it's visually keeping you like locked right. in, right. right? And everything is done visually in a way that's plausible, so you can see like this happen in live action. You know, it's like choreographed. Right, right. So so it's like you know, none of it none of it pulls you out of none of it is so. Um, so far in the realm of disbelief that like it takes you out of it, right? Yeah, it's you know what I mean. Like there is a point A, B, mm-hmm. C, like leading you all the way up to Z, in in a, in a way that like is believable and convincing. Yeah, the, well, go to it. There, there, you know, just like an action movie would have. You know, every, everything leads to everything else. <laughs> You know, the right. uh, action has an uh, opposite reaction. Yeah, it, it makes total sense. Right. There's always going to be that cause and effect. There's always <laughs> going to be like elements of you know plausibility, right? You know, there aren't there aren't any MacGuffins. Uh, you know, I don't I don't do any of the any of the uh, the quick transitions where like oh like it feels like there was a time skip or anything, right? Like I'm a I'm a big fan of like Donnie Yen movies. Mm-hmm. Right and and in particular, I believe it was um, was it Killzone? I think it was Killzone. Right, Killzone. Uh, I think that's the that, that's the one where he's like he's a police officer, but he's like does a lot of mixed martial arts in that film. Right. Um, I think you're right. Yeah, it, it's 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 one where he was doing a lot of like German suplexes <clears throat> and, and like arm bars <clears throat> in, in like uh, one of the earlier scenes. So there's a scene in that movie where he's chasing a perp for like at least two miles <laughs> right and and for anyone who's watching the stream if you've ever watched the donnie yen movie one of the things that like you never want to make donnie do is run because when he, Does he run like steven you, seagal oh man listen when donnie finally catches you that would be the most epic of beatings, all right, and he will beat you with everything you in run. the general vicinity. Okay, <laughs> so it's one of those scenes where he's like chasing this perpetrator, and, and the guy's like running through like alleyways and backyards, and they end up in this mar- this outdoor marketplace where like Donnie, like <coughs> he's locked in on the guy, running at him full speed. And in a smooth, seamless transition, manages to slide behind the guy and transition into a German suplex through a table. Wow. Right? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> See, and, and and that's that's like one of the things that are like I find absolutely satisfying about fight choreography, right? When when we we lose the fancy camera tricks and it's all about the athleticism. Right. You know what I mean? It's about the dance. It's, well, about it's the like oh, yeah. it's like that other mm-hmm. scene in uh in the protector with Tony Ja, that that stairwell scene oh, yeah. where you're going up where he's where the camera's following him up the stairwell and he's literally like something out of a video game, just beating people up and then like throwing them over the banister. Like that's fantastic. And and like, that's uh, the, like the old boy that I like bringing that's like the, the old boy remix like with uh comics. With uh, uh what's his name? The guy who played cable. Oh um Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, He's been. He was Goonies. Oh, uh, like, you know, oh, I know you're talking Roland, about James boy, Roland, not James, James, yeah, James, James Roland. Josh Roland. Josh Roland. Old boy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hallway. So scene. If you've seen, if you've seen the new Old Boy, like the Old Boy remake, where he, he has he goes to a fight scene, it's one continuous shot from the time he gets into this warehouse until he go like up five floors. It's one continuous shot of him just whooping ass the whole way. Exactly. It, it's, exactly. That's that's the wildest part of that whole movie. Well, like the old, or like the Daredevil TV show, that hallway scene in the uh-huh. first yes. season. Saving well, the kid from the Russians. Kenny, yeah. what did I say to you before you tackled that last fight scene? What did I tell you? And what did I hit home with you a hundred times? You said that you wanted it to feel <clears throat> intense. You wanted to see distress in her face. And uh, you didn't. you didn't care about page count. Nope. And I wanted to be claustrophobic. He's just honestly on top of her constantly. True. So, and and that's like if you guys like if for those of you that managed to get the manga, uh, if you look at those last, I think it was uh, fifteen pages or so, 
uh, that's exactly what I did. So there, there are very few panels where we see tragedy by herself, right? Where it, it, if there's a shot of tragedy by herself, it's usually her like reflecting to herself, like, man, you know, I can't, I can't get this guy off. Right. And like, we can see the, the visual distress <coughs> in her eyes. So right up until uh, she, she has her mask cracked, it's the intensity in the eyes, right? right. And we can see <clears throat> visual wear on tragedy where, you know, initially when she's presented uh, in that conflict, you know, she's got her braid, she's got all her, all her daggers, she's got her pistols, she's got her swords. And systematically, as we get to the final uh, uh, climax of that, of that fight, she loses the braid, loses her pistols, loses yep. her swords, uses up her <clears throat> daggers. And so you see the symbolism in there. Combat. And it, has her mask broken. See, there's a symbolism there. That's the whole point. She keeps losing more and more and more of herself. And she starts to lose her confidence. And what happens? She's stabbed and thrown through the chest and thrown off a freaking roof. Yep. <clears throat> and again... Uh, it's really funny. I didn't bring it up, but Sean Chen was at one of my conventions that I ran. It was a small art show, actually. It wasn't my big convention. And it was during COVID uh, or just after the severe COVID. And <clears throat> he walks up to me at my table that I had at my own show selling tragedy. And he goes, you killed off your pro protagonist in the first issue? What the <laughs> hell? I go, Sean, quiet. <laughs> there was someone buying the book right next to him. I was like, Sean. He goes, oh, sorry. <clears throat> so fun, fun fact, I, I had brought um, a couple copies to the studio where I teach. Right. And, uh, and, and it was, it, it was a, it was a couple of, it was like two, huh, yeah, of the manga. And they were they were meant to be uh, raffle prizes, right? Because I was I was hosting a workshop that day, right? And all all of these kids are like teens, like late teens. So um, one of the owners of the studio was there, and he's a big manga guy. So I let him read it, right? Because he was he's like seen me work on the pages while I was still in production that I would like show up to to teach my classes, right? So he he's in he's in the office for about 20 30 minutes or so, right? I'm in the middle of teaching my kids and so forth and making sure everybody's good. And he emerges from the office and he goes, "Really? You got to end it like that?" <laughs> right? You know, it, I I had to give him the shoulder shrug and I'm like, "You know, stay tuned, right? <laughs> for the next episode." You know? Do you? <laughs> well, look, I forgive me for patting myself on the back. I don't do this often. I am good at cliffhangers, and it was a good one. Every Nobody issue, saw that coming. Nobody every saw issue that. at the end of the issue, you go, motherfucker. Now I gotta find out what now, happens next. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be the contrary here. I knew, I knew you didn't, didn't kill her off. <laughs> I just knew it. I just, I knew it was a bad ass whooping. But I was like, there's no way she's there. She can't be there. You want to know the funny thing? I considered actually killing her off, and the rest of the story was flashbacks. Mm. Oh, that'd have been a while, wow. I think. That would have been, that'd have been, mm. yeah, that'd have been wild. I mean, it is called tragedy. You didn't know who it was about. <clears throat> I was too optimistic, optimistic that you wouldn't kill off your main character. Uh, yeah. I knew it was a kind of setup. But well, yeah. here's the funny thing. As the creator and the writer of the story, I'm almost 30 issues in scripts, and I have stories throughout 75 issues. And I really think I've done some cool shit in this book that is going to be a while before you see it. But, I mean, even my wife goes, you've got so many oh shit moments that if this was a Netflix show, people would be fucking pissing themselves and all over it. I mean, I do some, I think I do some stuff that people don't really do. Let's put it this way. Joe creates duplicates of himself. 
Joe does some crazy stuff with these duplicates. But unlike any other character that multiplies, Joe feels the pain when they get killed. Ooh. And he feels the death. Ooh. That's got to suck. Yeah. That's why Joe is the way he is. Um, <clears throat> there's some cool scenes, man. Cool stuff. And I get into... I get into a lot of shit. And I have a character called Reflex that is going to be her Joker. Mm. This woman is fucking psychotic. And she's like Taskmaster. She has photo reflexivity. So she can fight as well as you if she studies you and watches. But she's insane. And she's the new Irish assassin. <clears throat> okay. And I have a, I have a character called Duality. He's got split personality disorder. And one personality is Drunken Monkey. So when he fights Breath of the Dragon's precognitive ability, Breath of the Dragon can't read him because he doesn't know what he's going to do next. He's Drunken Monkey. He's just doing it. His other personality, he's a speedster. <clears throat> so Breath of the Dragon can't – he's too fast. There's so like much. Yeah. Dude, this so, but the thing is the character's funny because he each he's a split personality disorder that they don't know they're the same person. They talk about the other guy as if he's a separate entity. It's kind of comical. Um this is perfectly a, like a, a TV show right here. Oh, definitely. The characters have so much depth already. Dude, there are some scenes that issue 13 is a 23 page all out brawl in the middle of Manhattan with Alexi, who is the this were tiger. I'm gonna spoil it. You know what makes him different than any other were tiger character? <clears throat> He's a were tiger that turns into a human. The tiger, <laughs> yeah. the, the tiger is his true nature. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> So, it turns into a human. So here's the thing. A Russian mage in the early 1600s took Beng um, Siberian tiger male and female and a human male and female and magically combined them. But what happened was the dominant personality is what took over. You know, we're arrogantly thinking we're the king of the kingdom. It's only because we have a more powerful brain. If you put a man in the middle of a jungle without our intelligence, we don't last a second. So the primal instinct of the tiger took over, and that's their main personality. And they form, and they mate, and they grow, and over the centuries, <clears throat> they only have about 800 of them in, in living because they never had an industrial age because they embraced the tiger part, not the human part. So they're in the Siberian tundra in Russia in a small community, and they've never grown. And they have their scholars, and they're saying to the king, if we don't start embracing our human side, we're not going to experience an industrial revolution. We're going to die. We're not going to grow. And he's stubborn. He doesn't. They, they scoff at humans. Well, the Russian military finds them. Wipes them all out, <clears throat> except for one. And that one is taken by a Russian operative, and he teaches him how to play the game as a human and use the tiger when you need to. But he keeps reverting to the primal, primordial tiger. When he gets angry, he rips your head off. <laughs> Instead of I mean, that, would, that would be like a like a, for me. I was thinking that would be just a really horrible power to be this great powerful tiger then turn into some guy. It's just like <clears throat> uh, I don't know what am I gonna do? But the interesting part of it is watching him fight his primal urges, like most of us do with our anger, etc., every day in our libidos, yeah. and try to become a sophisticated human. It's like that. Uh, 
was it that meme of uh, the wolves in the woods? And he's like, look at me. I'm a human. I'm paying bills. I got stress. I drink coffee. <laughs> he's like stepping up on his feet. <laughs> well, he could be like an office unicorn. But on that note. <laughs> Good plug. Good plug. Kenny, <laughs> Kenny, before you go, give us your plugs. Tell us what's going on. And then uh, – We'll say see you. So uh, currently, what's going on? The Office Unicorn available on uh, a kid in a comic dot com. It's, uh, it's yes, the kid in a comic. Shout out to John. Uh, we, we, myself, and Juan Navarro, who's a, a cartoonist, the, who's a who's a, a buddy of mine. We collaborate on the Office Unicorn about a mythical who works in an office. Right. The the twist is uh, only one person can see him as the unicorn. Right. We don't we don't know what everyone else uh, sees when they look at Eugene. Right. So it's. Um, but thank Man. you, Len. <laughs> I get in a comic. Right. Uh, so it is a, a bi monthly sub subscription where you get the physical paper at home. Or you can read the comic <laughs> on akidatacomic.com. All right, so that that's going on. We're we're heading into uh, year two of uh, the Office Unicorn. And I'm a subscriber. Uh, I have every issue. Yes. Len, drop the Len, drop the um link of the uh website, please. Yes. Because Len's in it too. Uh, also, I'm currently working on the next indie book project. The project is called Running in the Deep. I'll, I'll reveal more uh, as uh, as that progresses, and um, yeah, shows shows coming down the line. Uh, I'll be at uh, Otaku Fest in May, so if you guys are in the Miami area, uh, that'll be my next really big show. Uh, other show appearances are tentative. Right, I typically do horror. Uh, not horror. Wow, My, I'm getting tongue tied. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> uh, Heroes Con in North Carolina, um, and uh, potentially SuperCon this year. So, um, as always, you know, commission spots are open. Uh, you can hit me at Wilding Studios. It's it's you, you can see the spelling on the bottom of the screen there. That is my my Instagram. Uh, and shoot me a direct message there. I'm also going to be hosting some workshops in uh, in the uh, library circuit here in Miami Dade, as well as uh, some stuff in the city of Doral. So uh, you know, I got I got a few things. I got a few things uh, like coming down the line in the next couple months. Uh, ooh, you sound busy. <laughs> yeah, oh, and and, be, and being busy is a blessing. Let me tell you. <laughs> Can, can I can I mention the other stuff, Phil? What stuff? Uh oh. <laughs> no. 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 The um, what you just gave me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go oh, ahead. so uh, I'm doing some stuff for Dynamite as well. Dynamite. Yes, I, I uh, just. Submitted some stuff for the uh, th what is the thirty fifth anniversary of Puppet Master, so nice. the card a, a sketch card set for Dynamite. I'm currently working on a, a set for uh, the fortieth anniversary of Transformers for Dynamite, and I just turned in uh, an e pack for Marvel Premiere, right? Wow. Which I, I themed after just mutants. I'll, I'll, nice. I'll share that momentarily, but yeah, I'm I'm busy. You know, but uh, to to keep up, you know, follow me, Wilding Studios on on Instagram. I'm pretty good about about posting. If you don't hear from me for a few weeks, it's usually because like I'm jam packed with stuff. But then I'll like bombard the feed with like content. Uh, and where can we see your your covers for Tragedy? <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> You can find all of the covers for tragedy at philboentertainment.com. No, your covers. Where are your covers? My stuff? Oh, in in the uh in the in the art edition. There you go. All right. So support the campaign. There's tons of goodies in there. The Thank you, Kenny. 
Well, you know, I try to fill it. A brick of art. <laughs> and by the way, thanks to Kenny's wonderful, lovely fiance. Yes. Um, yes. Tragedy is now going to be available in Spanish. Yes. Oh. Yes. I'll see. My, 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 my lovely fiance. Uh, took the time to translate Tragedy Chapter 1. Uh, she did a phenomenal job. Right? Yeah, she did. And, uh, you know, she was very efficient at it. And, you know, we we, we look forward to uh, doing more. Yes. <laughs> if I try to do that, I'd probably cause <laughs> international conflict. <laughs> I'd try to translate it. <laughs> La tragedia. <laughs> Muy pronto en Univision, right? Just with his accent, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> La telenovela, tragedia. <laughs> uh, Kenny, thanks for coming out and hanging with us. Sorry you sat around, pleasure. but... It's good to see everybody. It's always good to see you, Kenny. <laughs> I'll be, be in good. touch, guys. So it'll be well. You too. Later. Um, we're going to wrap it up in a few minutes, but poor Kevin hasn't gotten a lot of time. So <clears throat> you got your art book, which is behind you. Tell us about your art book. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us if you're available for commissions. Tell us what you're doing, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. Uh, not a whole lot. I've uh, got a couple conventions coming up. i got a local convention in April. Uh, I'll be doing CreepyCon again in August, August uh, 2nd to the 4th in Knoxville. That's a fun horror convention. I loved it last year. Um I'm not working on a whole lot. I've got my own IP coming out through uh, Bilbo Apollo. Uh, we'll be launching that sometime later this year. Uh, I saw that, that up. on Phil's page. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he got the first 10 pages in his last campaign. Uh, they looked great. The lettering and the colors just, like, blew it out of the water. I was like, who drew this? It wasn't me. <laughs> it looks too good. <laughs> the colors and everything it looks like a professional package. But that ain't me. Uh, but mm-hmm. now that's coming out. Mm-hmm. I gotta give you credit because when I when I saw this and I when I saw Phil put it out there, I was like, oh oh oh. So, so uh, Phil got a, a book that's been going on for a while. So that's what it looked like to me. I'm like, oh, this book's been out for a while. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so I if I wasn't such a procrastinator, it would be out. So yeah, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to refine it. You know, I'm trying to try to make it as, as good as I can. Um, but that's that's a that's a very uh, superhero Superman kind of story. Um, that's my genre. I like I like this just dark superhero kind of comic books. Uh, Invincible is something that really inspires and me. That's, and that, I love. Mm. And that's what I'm going to tell you is this story is different than any other Superman archetype. So, yeah, yeah, it's not what you expect. Not what you. I mean, you you after you read it and everything, you might you be like, oh, okay, I see that. But initially, it's going to catch you off guard. Uh, you're not going to ex- expect what to, what's going to happen in the story. Nice. I, you I know, wanted to. Uh, I, I do want to apologize, both Vaughn Coleman and Kevin. The credits page somehow was omitted in all these. After the proof was solid, somehow they printed up without the credits pages. <clears throat> so I don't have a credits page in here, and neither do they. And I apologize. <clears throat> I'm, I'm. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm good with that, man. I understand. It's. It's. I'm perfectly fine with that. But uh, so that's coming out. I'm working on that. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm just working on this uh, the story for Glenn, his his King Alma book that he's uh, he's wrote. Uh, we went through and did some refining on it, some tightening and, and some moving things around it. I, I think we've come up with a really powerful, fun story for his his vision. Um, and I'm, I've been working on that, so I've got to get that finished up here in a couple couple weeks, months maybe. But other than that, um, if you want a commission for me, I'm, I just wrapped up a commission oh, for, for, me, for his last. What's that? That was the video. Sorry, I keep <laughs> oh, it? Go ahead. Keep going, go. I got two fills going on here. Phil <laughs> <laughs> stereo here. Stereo. Um. So I'll just wrap it up, commissions. Uh, if you want a commission for me, you can hit me up at The Art of Kevin on Instagram or Facebook um, or instant message me, whatever you want to do. I'll work something out with you. Uh, if you like horror, that's one of my strong points. Uh, I do have uh, my art book. It's a 40-page like print 
co collaboration of, of well, not collaboration, but copies of my prints of colors in black and white, plus some story about how I got into doing art and some older pieces and just a little narrative. I wanted to throw some little narrative in there to kind of walk you through my mindset, how I got started in comic books. Uh, that's available on my um, my artofkevin.net store. Right. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm just kind of laying low and just working on small things at a time. It's not, it cool. sounds like you're busy. I, I don't know about small things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm listening to you and I'm like, no, no, you know, you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to get through stuff. I, I, I could be a little bit faster. I think that's, that's my problem. I got too much stuff going on, like on the side. Yeah, you're busy. Um, <laughs> you know, kids, wife, wife, you know, 40 hour job, sleeping, you know, important things. It's so funny, though, because a lot of people look at us and, and then we're in this industry and we're doing all this stuff. And then they're like, um, oh, 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 why is it taking you so long to whatever? I'm like, dude, I'm doing the comedy. I'm doing the, the parents. I'm doing the work. I'm doing the. Oh, where do you find? Where do you think we have the time to get done what we need to get done? If I could go back in time, oh my gosh, I would definitely do some things different with uh, my young self. Get his ass on track. I say that all the time. I, I, I would, I would get Ralph on track in a whole different direction, um, and not spend uh, twenty five years in the hospital. <laughs> I feel you there. I feel you that. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because that job tried to kill me. Yeah, I think we'd all attack differently, right? <laughs> Hindsight's size 2020, right? Shit. <laughs> I have no regrets. I just wish I would have, would have took more advantage of the time I had. So I tell my oh, kids that. Yeah. It's like, you've only got so much time. If you want to do something, you need to do it. Don't procrastinate. Put yourself into it. And uh, don't be 40 years old or 45 looking back saying, I wish I would have done more of this when I had the time. Because it's You know what it is? It. Sometimes we value well, problem is, right? Yeah. And then, and then <clears> all of a sudden, <throat> we're like, Oh, oh yeah, I shouldn't have valued that. <laughs> Maybe that's that's where the wisdom of parents are supposed to come in to pass it down and and for our kids to completely ignore it. Oh, all the and time. Do what they want to do. I tell my daughter something, she goes, "Okay." Like, yeah, sure, Dad. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think I think you know when you're young, it feels like you have the whole you have a long oh, yeah. life ahead of you. <clears throat> yeah. When you get older, you see how quick it went, <clears throat> and um, yeah. So that's, that's a big true. factor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to leave on a depressive point there, you know. That's just that's where I'm at. I trying to make the most of my time, get some stuff done. But if you want to follow me, I'm at the Art of Kevin Instagram, uh, Facebook. If you want to follow my political rants and uh, completely hate me, you can follow me there. Um, <laughs> For the instant message, and I'll we've worked something out. So, thanks for having me on, Phil. Uh, we, uh, if you want to get a copy of, you should get a copy of the artist edition of this book because that is a stellar piece of literature, uh, beautiful art, and you're not going to get that anywhere else. So if you want to go to IDW, that's fine. Do what you want to do. But if you want some actual great art in a collected edition that you're not going to get anywhere else, you've got to get this edition. This is it. Because it's got my work in it for one. But. There you have it, folks. Yeah. I, Go get it. <laughs> Go get it. I'm coming to your house. Yeah, in all seriousness, uh, I hope people come out strong, buy some of the original art. That would be great. Yeah, that alone yeah. will help you out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I didn't think I was going to make it through this three and a half hour show. I told I'm you, impressed. Ralph, I, I go into another gear. That's because you, you went into advertising. I really so. felt like total shit all day today. Emotionally, physically, mentally, I was in total disarray today. Felt like total shit. <clears throat> I feel ill, you know, physically, dealing with my father's stuff. Um, everything, I just... I, I even was a step higher when I saw Ralph backstage to try to perk up. My wife was like, how are you going to get through the show today? I'm like, show must go on. You have to do what you have to do. Yeah. I'm from that you generation where. So we, we want to thank your wife because you did she did a great job helping you be able to complete the show. <laughs> Dude, she 
gave me a whole bunch of lozenges, just kept coming in. She's like, here when you're ready. This is a whole different kind of ending. Like, <laughs> That's why I didn't drink it yet. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's gonna... I'm just talking. Yeah, it's probably not going to much for me. us and Phil sleeping. And us going, you guys got to buy this book. Come on. Look at this. I'll be like, I'll be like Dale Keown. I'll be like Dale Keown. <laughs> Remember Dale Keown's video several months back? <clears throat> he fell asleep on a YouTube channel for like four hours. It was hilarious. I love his art, man. Oh, yeah. And he seems like yeah. a generally nice guy. I don't know what happened, what he was going through, but that dude's, his dude is uh, amazing art. I mean, anyway. you've, seen it, you've seen his pencils. Right? It takes him probably all like two or three days to get just the penciling stage done on what he does. It's stuff. It's so intense. I know. It makes me stress. It stresses me out looking at the detail. I'm like, oh my god, I can't go to begin. I want him to do a cover drawing Alexi the Were Tiger. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. All right, look, guys. You know, can um, Ralph? I asked you to pick up the slack, and then I wound up doing all the talking anyway. I'm sorry. I tried jumping in, but <laughs> I know. I, I I'm a talker. When I get in when I get in mode marketing mode, I don't stop. I apologize, but I, I'm glad that you came and helped, and I appreciate you. Oh no problem. Anytime, Phil. <clears throat> um, and anytime you want me to be on the written writ uh, for this oh, book, I'd be happy, dude. You know, you're, you know, we're going to have you on for this. So <laughs> cool. And anybody else you want to bring? <laughs> <clears throat> you guys are awesome. I appreciate you. Sorry if you sat around a lot, Kevin. Uh, I'm oh, over okay. working on the art anyways. I'm just drawing. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw Kevin was like doing other things. I'm like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> this is, this is me through the entire career of uh, elementary school and high school. And <laughs> just so my teacher's talking and I'm just drawing. Ah. Probably had a, a, a 2.0 GPA when I graduated. So what you're saying is I'm like the teacher from the peanuts. You just hear wah, 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 wah. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I'm married. I just turned you off, you know. Just, wah, wah, wah. I got you on mute. It's all right. <laughs> I want to know who are the last three people to be hanging out with us. I appreciate you. I got to say, the, the, the room's been full, empty, full, empty. <laughs> I know. Probably Delphi. Right. He's probably asleep. Yeah, four hours. All right, guys. Um, sincerely, thanks for for coming on and everything you do to to help and contribute. You know, Ralph, uh, you're gonna plug yourself before you go, but you know, you're <clears throat> always sharing out posts and you're a pillar in the community, trying to help everyone, and and uh, you do great things. And um, I definitely, I don't know if you get enough appreciation, but I appreciate you thank you it's always great to get appreciation so i'm not gonna stop you <laughs> I, uh, i'll see you, you the want to delay that was so weird you know, but <laughs> i'll do the plug hold on <clears throat> well, no. hello there, apple Bites. this is your <clears throat> apple bite written Rit ralph talking to you straight here from phil's show as we talk about his beautiful kickstarter that you guys go check out right now that thing is a weapon and a beautiful piece of art so go check that out. And if you guys are free, why don't you go hang out with us on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time for Apple Bites, and on Wednesday for the Written Writ, my show, where we hang out at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, and we talk all the beautiful things about creating, writing, drawing, all the geek stuff. Come on, hang out with the, the Bitten Apple guys and have some fun. <coughs> Very cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely Raph has that that uh, anchor man type like radio voice. <laughs> Come on down on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, right. I like it. Uh, well, I prefer to say the Barry White. American. Yeah, he does that. He does have the Barry White. I want to come get down and hang out with the Bitten Apple because we're going to get all smooth and lovely. <clears throat> midnight, the midnight storm. <laughs> all I'm going to say is Black Eric storm. Rivera and, uh, and DM Ray stuck around this late yep. and two other people. You guys are awesome. I and appreciate DM you. Ray and Eric Rivera. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am literally going to have no voice in the morning and the house is going to be happy. 
you're gonna have no voice at all, man. <laughs> you pushed it too hard. No, it's shot. Yeah. It's... You like you were good for a little bit. Yeah, there, well, and then... <laughs> it's important. You guys are awesome. All right, Phil, get some sleep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys rock. Yeah, I because I accidentally clicked on the, the Facebook and it was playing the video live, but it there's a delay. And yeah. in my headphones, I'm hearing what you said 30 seconds ago, and it was I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the Nacquil, Phil. Yeah, really. Uh just doing a shout out. Yeah, doing a shout out. DM Ray has a book he's publishing with me and Philbo Publishing. It's nice. called The Mad Caps. Um, <clears throat> Ralph, if you haven't gotten him on your show, get him on your show. Um, if you like D and D, come hang out. <laughs> if you like D and D and you like fantasy and you like role playing D and D, he incorporates all of that into this campaign. The book is well written. It's well illustrated. Great colors from from Dan Kemp from Spawn. Um, some beautiful covers. Jimbo Salgado did an amazing cover, and it's a it's basically a book of four friends who reunite in a town, and they find out there's some bad shit going down, and they have to uh, unite again to take yeah. care of it. <clears throat> um, it's set in the Dungeons and Dragons world. It definitely has Dungeons and Dragons themes, but it also um, they're dealing with a drug problem. But it's interesting, and it's it's D and D, uh, and it also has four miniatures and a twenty sided die going to be on the campaign. Oh wow! And a wood engraved panel of the Jimbo Salgado cover. So it's uh. It's got almost 100 followers right now. We ask you, uh, DM Ray, drop the link, please. <clears throat> drop it, DM. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> drop that beat. And uh, go support a kid in a comic. John Jay is a good guy. He's doing a great thing. It's an awesome idea. Uh, I love. I enjoy reading them with the kids. Check them out. Uh, check out Lynn Danovich. He's a great artist. Um Check out Eric Rivera if you need inks. Uh, or I think he does pencil work too, but um, reach out to Eric if you need an inker. <clears throat> uh, and sign up, please, down there for Mad Caps for DM Ray. You're helping Phil with publishing, but you're really making his dream come true. It's his first book. He's excited. I'm happy for him. And we're going to get that going. All right. You got to roll for initiative, people. And I got the dice right here ready to go. Damn. That's a massive die right there. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time someone said it was massive, I owe five bucks. I'm about to say you'd be owing some money. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, who's going to help me on the way out because I can't speak? You guys know what I say, don't you? Be legendary. And, and have, have fun storming the castle. castle. 